Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are, on the face of this very planet, as always, we welcome you to this very special end of year edition, the New Year's Eve edition of Radio Biafra broadcast live and direct wherever you are wherever you are staying out where you are domiciled where you are residing across the face of this very earth the entire 24 time zone is carrying this very broadcast live and direct you can join us on facebook you can join us on TuneIn. there is a plethora an array of ways through which and by which you can participate in this very program this evening. We are on FM in Biafra land. We are on satellite. We are relentless. We are determined. We are not surrendering. We don't intend to and we can never. There will be no retreat and there will be no surrender. The only movement we know is upwards and forwards. And that is why Biafra will come in our time as I welcome you by saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. So do I expect you to welcome all those who are around you. You must bring your pen and your paper with you. You must do all you can within your powers to make sure that this very gospel is propagated to the ends of the earth because contained within it, is the very essence, is the very beginning of the crumbling of the damnable zoological republic. That very contraption created by the British called Nigeria. That very hopeless place, a Sharia territory, a territory of jihadists, a territory of killers, a territory of stark illiterates, those who are backward, never, ever to move forward, they are cursed. It is a cursed entity. And this evening, believe you me, we are going to unravel it. I do not know how many hours we are going to stay together, but I can assure you before we bring this program to a conclusion this evening, anybody who hitherto were in doubt as to the precipitous collapse of the zoo, such doubts will be consigned. It will be removed, it will be taken away, never, ever, ever to resurface, not to reoccur in the hearts of those that want to see the light, those who want to see freedom. Therefore, I welcome each and every one of you. My name is Nnamde Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra and by the very special grace of Elohim Chukukika Biyama Prumi Yanina a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Our job is to disseminate this very gospel. Our job is to preach it. Our effort is all geared towards the restoration of Biafra. And there is nothing any mortal can do to stop it. Even now, the zoo and their leadership is beginning to acknowledge. And they must know that they are in very serious trouble. We are not going to be placated with warm words about restructuring. We are not going to be moved from our position with mindless, or should I say, very vacuous assurances. We are determined and we are very resolute. The only thing we want is Biafra, nothing more, nothing less. People can decide amongst themselves to bring ridicule and shame to their ignorance. But insofar as IPOB is concerned, we are resolute, we are determined, we remain ever pure, both in heart, in spirit, and on this very temporal flesh. This very effort to restore Biafra is founded on the irresistible principle of scrupulous cleanliness, whiter than white and whiter than snow. Therefore, we are unrelenting. Therefore, we are not, by any stretch of the imagination, going to trade this very noble effort for some sham restructuring. What we are interested in is the restoration of Biafra. And that is exactly what we intend to do. Before we proceed, I must 
please remind you to be mindful of the fact that you need uh, your pen and your paper ready. Without your pen and your paper, there is no way you can learn. We have come to lecture. We have come to address humanity. We have come that those who are blind may see. That those who hitherto we are born and raised in ignorance may become enlightened to understand their perilous state, to understand the hopelessness of Nigeria, and to do something about it, to extricate themselves from the hellhole that they find themselves in. This is Radio Biafran. Allow me to repeat that we are live and we are direct, and heaven is bearing us witness. That is a fact. There are those who may wish to stand upon what we have accomplished to perhaps relaunch their dead careers, but we can assure them that the path we have chosen is very arduous and very difficult. Only the pure at heart will be able to walk it. And that is exactly what this God ordained IPOB is doing. Before we go any further, we must hand over our proceedings to heaven to Chukukika Biyama Purumi in the creator of the heavens and this very earth. On this very New Year's Eve, the very last day of the year, according to Gregorian calendar, we must understand that. What we are in for today is adhering to Gregorian calendar. It is not the calendar of the ancients. We must always remember that. But all the same, considering that all the areas of the world touched or should i say tainted by western influence is observing it as the end of the year and by virtue we are obliged to do so and we must pray to chukukika biyama we will him in heaven the giver of life and the giver of hope you that have decreed that we will be alive in the land of the living to see this very day not because we merit it, but because that is what you only you have determined. We have come to the end of the year in the Gregorian calendar 2019. In all that we have been through, in all that we have endured, we give your name praise. We lift you up because there is no other like thee in sickness and in health. We praise your holy name in good times and in bad times. We adore thee. We remember those who are incarcerated. We remember those who were with us by this time last year who are no longer here. My parents amongst them. We remember those who have suffered, those who have lost limb, those who have lost a part of their body, those who are suffering, those who are in pain because of the restoration of Biafra. We are going through all this that your will may be fulfilled upon the lives of those that call upon thee morning, noon, and night, because we have no other than thee. There is no God elsewhere apart from thee. There is no other entity. There is no other befitting of praise and adulation except thee, Elohim. You will listen to our prayers. You will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. You will hear us when we call upon thee. Although we mourn in our complaint and always complain and petition thee because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked in the zoo called Nigeria, for they cast iniquity upon your children and in wrath they hate those of us that speak the truth. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon some of your children and horror has overtaken us. And we continue to say, oh, we wish we had wings like a dove, then we will disappear and leave all this Biafra restoration in the hands of those who are not worthy. But when, O oh Elohim, we wander off in our thoughts, we are lost in the wilderness. For only thee can direct us back through the path of truth and righteousness that we may seek thee with clean conscience and a pure heart so that Biafra may be restored. 
we will, O Elohim, escape the wind of evil in the zoo. For Biafra you have set apart as your own. You will destroy all those that have sought to destroy us in the past. You will destroy all those who are seeking to destroy your children. And all those who are seeking to divide us into South South and Southeast, Niger Delta and the East, O oh Elohim, so will you divide their tongues. For we have seen violence in them and we have seen their cities collapse. Horror shall befall them day and night. They will not know they are going out, nor they are coming in. For mischief and sorrow will dwell amongst them, because they have a wickedness, deceit, and guile. For it was not an enemy from the north that we should fear, but those who are born within, or those that bear our names, those who sit and walk for the enemy, all their work will come to nothing, for they will be destroyed. For we have devoted all that we are unto thee. For only you, Elohim, is our hope. Only you, O Heavenly Father, have we sought refuge under. For the zoo will fall. Nigeria will be seized by death and destruction and they cannot escape it. For you have heard our cries and our affliction. For you, only you, abided by the word that cometh forth from your mouth. For you have decreed that Biafra will come. And so we know, we hope, we pray, and we tirelessly work towards the restoration of your kingdom upon the face of this very earth. Because the words of your mouth are yea and amen. For you have proclaimed Biafra, so shall Biafra come in our time. For only you, Elohim, shall bring down into the pit of destruction the damnable zoological republic, that very Nigeria, bloody and deceitful, that you shall destroy in the days of the sons of men, like in our time that Biafra may come, and your name exalted, praised, adored, and worshipped. Forever and ever we pray. He said, He said, He said, This evening, as I said earlier, if you do not have your pen and paper, you are missing a lot. This is a lecture, not just a broadcast, but a lecture. This evening, we shall attempt to tell you about the origin, the genesis of the jihadi movement you have in Nigeria today, this very evening or morning or afternoon or night, depending on where you are, you will come to the full realization that Nigeria is so hopeless that any attempt to sustain it will lead to further bloodshed, will lead to the jihadis gaining more foothold in the South it will lead to the utter destruction of our way of life. It will mean that we will no longer exist as a people. Anybody championing or, or carrying this very burden of the preservation of one Nigeria, I can assure you they are working towards your destruction as a human being and as a race of people. This is the context. What I'm trying to do this evening is just a context so you can understand it. I will try not to be too grammatical because our grandmothers are listening. People who do not say English as their preferred language of communication. It is our responsibility and our duty to ensure that they grasp the essence of this very gospel this evening because this is a gospel. A very important one at that. We need to build a better understanding of the mess we are all in and the desire of a supposedly Christian Britain. 
you must understand this you must open your brain you must open your mind you must begin to digest what you are hearing this evening this very gospel is important very very important because later on i will talk about what the president of rwanda said about the way we reason that is the only problem but my happiness is now we are beginning to come alive we are beginning to show signs of the ability to digest very complex information analyze it and be able to do something positive with it you must understand that britain is a christian entity supposedly they colonized the place today you call nigeria that never existed before you all know this history but tonight i want you to understand the implications of living inside something created by people who no longer worship god what you're going through now in the zoo is a phase of slavery it's very subtle so you don't notice it is the worst form of neo-colonialism britain cannot directly colonize to have access to our vast resources what they did was they put a house nigger in charge and they looked all around the zoo they couldn't have picked namdi azikiwe because he's learned albeit with his flaws they couldn't have picked awolowo because he was learned they went to the north to hand over power to them because they know that they are Lamajri, they are janjaweed they know they are jihadists they know they are more preoccupied with implementing and fostering their primitive way of life on other people than to be concerned with the art of good governance. Art is A-R-T, please, not act. Art of good governance. You can never get it from them. We are going through a phase of slavery. Using illiterate Muslim al in the zoo to hold everybody down in bondage. I give you a very simple example before we proceed very quickly. I want you to please tell me in which world you inhabit. Will somebody like Onogin and all the learned people who are on the bench be relegated to the background and a Sharia judge appointed as a CJN? Somebody who cannot express himself be it in Hausa or in English. Somebody who is not free enough, doesn't even understand the law. A chief justice of a secular, supposedly secular nation, or should I say, a secular contraption, arguing for the inclusion of Sharia in the constitution, which means that he doesn't even understand the constitution of Nigeria, which I will explain later on. By merely introducing Sharia into Nigeria, for Obasanjo to allow the 12 Arewa call North states to introduce Sharia. What they have done effectively is to amend the constitution without going to the National Assembly. You must understand the importance and the critical nature of this very aspect of political development in Nigeria. For them to have Sharia without going through the legislature in Abuja means that they have already tampered with the constitution outside the provisions of that same constitution that kept mentioning Sharia. I'm only giving you a bit of background. So when we proceed, you can anchor what you hear on all these very critical pillars that I have mentioned just this very moment. What you have in Nigeria is an alien socio-political arrangement of which the only beneficiaries are Fulani al -Majiri. They are the direct beneficiaries of colonialism. You must understand this. Those who are benefiting from the years of slavery and suffering of the people of the South are the North. Britain never took Christianity to them. They refused. Boko Haram that you're seeing that says Western education is dangerous was exactly the same thing the North said to the white man when they first had contact. I am sure that some of you are now familiar with the statements and pronouncements of um, Ulisegun Obasanjo. 
that said how in fact he told all of you who were ignorant before how many years it took for the british to subdue biafrans you must understand the importance of that very statement what they did was britain had to leave nigeria but for britain to retain their control their influence to still be colonizing nigeria till this very moment they needed a house nigger to do the job for them. And who are those house niggers? They are the Alamajiri Janjawi, the Fulani Fido laws you have in the north. While they were busy mouthing Western education is dangerous, when they first met the British, I'm not talking about Boko Haram. This was what, I, what I'm trying to build this evening is for you to understand that terrorism, Fulanization, Islamization, they are all one and the same, supported by the full and ruling class. You must understand this very well. This evening, I will, I was going to say I will attempt. I will unravel everything for the whole world to understand what is happening in that very zoo. Well, they were busy telling the white man then and people now that Western education is dangerous. After all, if it's not dangerous, why would they appoint an Alekali to come and become the CJN of Nigeria, Chief Justice of the Nation? His only experience in law is Sharia. They told you they don't need education. Buhari, when he was alive, was not educated. Of course, I concede sometimes he can speak a bit of English. If you can listen to him, that is. Or if you can hear what he's saying no certificate nothing whatsoever the same thing with the cjm because they told you that western education is meaningless they don't need it and now they're proving it to you that is not needed not just through terrorism but by the appointments that they make on a daily basis while they were busy mouthing their rubbish that western education is dangerous they were busy building and forging an enduring master slave house nigger relationship with the british because the British, they know this very well, that the East will not bow. And to an extent, the West. They won't because they're educated. That thing, you know, they know it. They went for the blind house niggers in the North and gave them leadership. That is why the current climate of violent Islamization that started with Obama. Go and check this very carefully. What you're seeing today, including the removal of, removal of Jonathan, was started when Obama got into power in the USA. And in collaboration with the then British Prime Minister, David Cameron, they insisted that power must go back to the North. They insisted, must go back to the North. Tonight, hopefully, I'm going to present you with facts and figures. Not from Biafra sources, not from something local, but these are from independent think tanks are brought by editorials of newspapers that support one nigeria what you're going to hear is basically what other people have been saying about the zoo about nigeria that you don't know about things that are hidden from you things you don't know about these are foreign observers who in the main are sympathetic to the illiterate ruling class of the north they love them so much but things have so deteriorated that they can no longer tolerate it. Most of these are European observers. Most of them are from the, um, the North Americas and some of them from Asia and some independent commentators from Africa. Hear what they are saying about Nigeria and that Nigeria is irredeemable. It has collapsed never ever to rise again. I said never. What you're doing is uh, pure cosmetics, to be honest with you. You are just deceiving yourselves, thinking that something that is unsalvageable can be salvaged. No, it cannot. And this evening, I want to begin by presenting facts and figures so you understand it. When I make a direct quote or analysis, I will tell you where we got it from. This is a publication by a group based in Europe called Religion Unplugged. 
I want you to understand the grand strategy to Islamize everybody. This is something, of course, to the Yoruba Muslims is nothing new. But to the rest, um, you better be very, very careful. They presented this analysis on March the 8th of this very year, 2019, because, of course, in Australia, they have gone into 2020. I spoke to Mazio former earlier. Listen very, very carefully to this. This is an analysis done by Religion Unplugged, independent analysis from a European-based think tank. They said here that during the elections of February the 23rd, listen very carefully to what they said. Forget about European observers, what those colonialists came and did in the zoo, saying the election was free and fair, which I will allude to later on. Here they said, that the elections held, I'm telling you the beginning of your problems, that every four years it repeats itself. You keep saying, get your voter's card. Oh, come and go and vote. I'm telling you what the world is saying about that Fulanite system. I next, anywhere you have Fulanese in power, there is always disobedience of rule of law, a breakdown of law and order, anarchy and fraud. Go and write it anywhere you find them. That is what you will get. The presidential and national assembly elections held in Nigeria on February 23rd was characterized by violence. Listen to it. Violence, harassment, and malpractices. Now tell me how people can subscribe to a country where year after year, every four years after every four years, you have the same thing since 1957 what is happening today did not just start you know come by an accident no it's been that way with the zoo every time there's an electoral cycle that is violence harassment and malpractices they went on to say that the lines were drawn by religion now those of you Avoiding, I, I must commend uh, Christian Association of Nigeria. At last, somehow, they are beginning to wake up. Here, international observers, people, think tanks, people who are learning and educated, people who are naturally sympathetic to the British line of argument that Nigeria must remain warm. They are telling you that the elections were determined by violence, harassment, and malpractices, and that religion played a key role in it. Muhammadu Buhari's election to president was followed. In, this is happening in March. In March, remember, March of this year, they said that they feel that this regime of APC, of course, fronted by Jubril, they call him Buhari, that he has come to Islamize, in quote, Nigeria. March, independent observers, white people outside the zoo. They are telling you that this man is coming to Islamize you. Now, the Nigerian Civil Society Institution Room, which is an amalgamation of 70 organizations, said that 260 people were killed in pre-election violence every four years, every two or three years. You have elections in the zoo and people are dying and you don't sit down to ask yourself. This is why the West is far more advanced than any other race, I should say, or especially, or let me put it this way. Every other race is more advanced than black people. Do you know why? Because when something goes wrong, when they build a bridge and the bridge collapses, they bring in their engineers. They want to find out what materials were used in the construction of the bridge. They want to know if, a robust visibility study was done before the bridge was constructed. They want to know those that built it. They want to look at all the variables that led to the collapse of that very bridge. And when they build a new one, they will eliminate everything they feel contributed to the collapse of the previous one. That is the difference between white and black people. But when it comes to us black people, our mind is not rigorous enough to interrogate issues and get to the bottom of it. You heard that in 1999 there was violence, death, 
they called another election again in 2000 and, um, 2003 or thereabouts. You voted again. Nothing happened again. until this very day. And the thing about Halamajiri is this, once they know that you don't give a damn about something, believe you me, it gets worse as the days go by. They are telling you that there are people we are killed. It didn't touch anybody. Now, listen, they said the trend follows patterns in previous elections conducted by INEC. They singled out INEC for damnation. And who is running INEC? Let me ask you. He's a Fulani man. Fulani president, Fulani INEC, Fulani judiciary, Fulani uh, House of Reps, uh, Fulani Senate, uh, Fulani Customs, Fulani Army, Fulani Police, uh, Fulani uh, uh, Civil Defense, Fulani Customs. Only Fulani. And that is why things are getting worse by the day. Because you cannot produce what you've not been given. If a people are not educated enough or savvy enough to come into the 21st century, they're still stuck in 16th century warped political mindset. How do you think they can improve your life? How? I ask you. And they have set up a system and a structure so rigidly held down that even if you have something in your brain, once you go or walk into any office, you become like them. That's what they have done. Remember that in 2011, as many as 800, conservatively speaking, I'm trying to be conservative, verifiable figures, 800 people were killed in post-election violence. According to research conducted by Human Rights Watch, why am I pointing all these things out? I want to establish a pattern of behavior in the zoo. I want to let you understand that those you claim are politicians, those you claim you're voting for, they lack the capacity to address the difficulties and the issues confronting you on a daily basis. In other words, Nigeria as presently constituted should not exist. I want to point out some of the perennial difficulties. I want to point out some of the entrenched problems in Nigeria that will never, ever, ever, ever go away. If you're looking for 24 hours electricity, if you want good roads, hospitals, it can never be obtainable inside Nigeria. It is impossible because there are certain factors welded to the fabric to the foundation, the very fraudulent base of the zoo that you can never dislodge. Never, ever, ever. It doesn't matter how many times you pray. It doesn't matter how many times you prophesy. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter how much green and white fabric you've wasted trying to convince yourself that you're patriotic. It will never go away. The analysis I'm bringing you are foreign-based observers. No, the zoo, they cannot publish such a thing for you. Never. Because they manage the news very well. They know how to bribe Google. They know how to bribe uh, Facebook. They know how to bribe people to do whatever they want them to do. Of course, money rules and money talks. I want you to understand that the cabal is prepared. The full and controlled North is prepared. I'm telling you, they are more than prepared. 10, 15 years ahead of everybody else. Some of us are going to go to church today to be mouthing the usual rubbish. But there will never be any improvement in our living conditions until we learn how to reason properly like human beings. Until we understand that Nigeria is not sustainable. What I'm giving you are facts and figures based on independent analysis and study of what is happening in the damnable zoological republic in that hellhole called Nigeria. Human Rights Watch. In 2015 elections, many people died. They said it was peaceful. How many, I don't like people dying, of course, I hate it. I, I'm not a violent person. How many people died in USA as a result of, you know, anti-Semitic attacks against the Jewish people? And it was reported all over the world. 
in elections you kill 800 people and the human being will write and tell the world that the elections were free and fair. Incidentally, most of you don't know this. Do you know that religion, Islam versus Christianity, was the undercurrent, was basically the undercurrent throughout the campaign of 2015? And even the one that you had early this year. They said that the result from, I'm telling you this to, to, to drive home the incompatibility of the various groups i'm not saying christian or muslim no once you return people back to who they are to who they were before the british came there will be peace the only thing that can guarantee peace the only thing that can start this from slaughtering innocent defenseless christians in the middle belt and in the south is a return to the way we were before the white man came and it is not. See, people keep telling you this nonsense. It's for the National Assembly. If you, we have a democracy, if you have any any gripe, take it to your to your uh, uh, to your MP. I don't call them MP. Take it to your senator, your House of Reps member. But I'm asking the Fulani Janjaweed, the Alamaji, when you change the constitution from a secular constitution, a non-religious constitution. When you inserted Sharia into the laws of the zoo, when you broke, when you, when you quite literally carved out 12 states in the north to say they are Sharia states, what do you think you were doing? Did you go to National Assembly? So when it comes to other people, they should follow the due process. Go to your senator, go to the House of Reps member uh, so that the chamber can debate it in Abuja. But when it came to your Sharia, you wanted Sharia so desperately that some people in the South are so useless and so ignorant, they don't know that effectively 12 Sharia states in the North have broken away from the zoo. They are practicing a completely different system. That is why they can go and arrest a man in a hotel saying he was found with three women. That is why you cannot drink alcohol. That is why those Janjaweed contemplated banning male and females from sitting inside the same coconut pep in the North. You don't understand it. Some of you are too blind. When I say the thing, I hate them. We are too pompous. We say that. No, of course, I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to drive home is this. Is that the way that you reason is flawed. That is why you cannot understand that when the Fulanese wanted something do so desperately, when the jihadists in the north, we are so desperate for Sharia. They did not go to Abuja to ask anybody for it. They sat on their own, they decided, and they forced Obasanjo to implement it. So when somebody is telling you about uh, Sharia, oh, you shouldn't uh, um, do this, you shouldn't uh, uh, um, um, uh, agitate for Biafra, you must go through the, uh, the right channel, right channel being, let it be discussed and voted upon in Abuja. You tell them who voted for Sharia to be introduced in the North. Who voted? They willingly subverted the constitution of a country. Some of you don't understand the implications of this. It means that Nigeria is not is running quite literally without any set of laws, no rules. They do whatever they like. After all, why would they detain somebody, somebody who's been granted bail? Why would they do that? Because they don't believe in the law. If they believed in the constitution of Nigeria, that Abdul Salami, their own fellow al drew up and included everything they wanted in it. There is no way they could have gone outside that same constitution to introduce Sharia in the 12 states of the north. This is just a, I'm only beginning, I've not even started this program very well. I'm just pointing out some things that will guide your thinking that when we get into the substance of the involvement of the late Buhari, the involvement of Abaki Yari, El, is it El Rufai, they call him the Sultan of Sokoto, in the own current wave of terrorism in the zoo, you will understand it. It's all a Sharia plan, planned and mapped out. All planned and well designed to deceive some gullible people. But you can't deceive IPOB, you can't deceive me. We are learned and highly educated you can't deceive us when they tell you don't agitate you must go to the right where the democracy go ask that person which channel did you people use sharia northerners which channel did you go to before you introduce sharia in the north did you go to national assembly 
Did the Nigerian constitution ever recognize Sharia? The answer is no. It mentioned it. It never said it is a way of life for the people. But you introduced it behind the constitution. Now, when we agitate for Biafra, you say, oh, why don't you go through the National Assembly? Did you go? All this are imagine I'm asking you, all the gender with, did you go through the National Assembly? I'm saying this so that people in the West, the more moderate, reasonable people in the West in Yoruba land can be able to reason and understand what I'm saying. I don't hate anybody, but I hate fools. I can't stand people who cannot reason very well. So you're telling me it's good uh, that one law operates for the Janja with the Alamajiri in the north and another law for people in the south? Is that what you're seriously saying? Is that what you're seriously saying? We are going to Biafra and nobody can stop us. It is um, they, um, they know it. Abak Yari, who is currently the forget all the nonsense, Juvril, all the makeup they put on his face, he will come out. One day his ear is cleft on the right, the other day is on the left. He, nobody knows what he's doing. No. And we know that Abak Yari is the one running the zoo with the help of um, the input of the cabal from the north. We know. And they are determined. They know this is the opportunity. If they miss it, they know that if the presidency were to come to the south, that they are finished. They know that very well. There will be structural reforms that will put an end to the reign of terror. That is why they will hold on for their dear lives, counting and hoping that Britain will support them. Let me also point this out. It took Britain over 30 years to overrun Biafra land. What makes you think that ordinary Alamajri who cannot read or write can defeat us in three years? Just ask yourself that very simple question. Britain fought Biafra for nearly 30 years before they managed to subdue us. Do you seriously think that in a straight fight between Biafrans, uh, Fulani, and uh, their allies in the north, that they can defeat Biafra? Do you think, do you seriously think so? That is why they, they ran to Saudi Arabia, they ran to Egypt, they ran to Britain, they ran to Russia. All these countries fought against, including OAU, fought against tiny Biafra. And we held them for three years. It was what I would call the Third World War. That is why they don't like talking about Biafra in all the, the political offices of the world, because they are ashamed of themselves. They know what they did. When I see, when I hear an imagery talk about the war, I feel sorry for the fools. Did you fight any war? It was the Egyptians who were flying your airplanes. Did you fight any war? All the logistics were provided by the British. The British ensured there was air, land, and sea blockade. When the Red Cross went to London to go and withdraw money to feed starving uh, Biafran children, the woman was arrested and, and, and detained by the British government. Harold Wilson said that he wants more people dead in Biafra land than in the Holocaust. You think you fought us? Fulani who said, uh, remember the war. Did you fight any war? Junaid Muhammad, did you fight any war? Anga Blahi, did you fight any war? Did you see war? In all the should I say the some of the, the theaters of war that we've had in recent times, including the Ekomo missions and all the rest of it? How many Fulani people were there at the front line fighting? Buratai that you see today has he seen battlefield before? Buratai, the chief of army staff. All then that is why, because he's never seen war before, he doesn't understand what a soldier is supposed to do. That is why they are in marketplaces harassing women who are selling crayfish. He's not a soldier. No genuine soldier will go to harass civilians. The reason why you have dictatorships in Africa is because their soldiers don't even fight wars. All they do is harass. Look at Ethiopia that's fought a war before. How there is freedom and progress. Because soldiers know if you call them to go and kill, they will tell you no, they will not go. They have seen war before. You have al in the north. They have never seen any war. The only war they have seen is to fly their helicopter to Kuje to make sure that I'm in prison. The only war they have seen is coming to Biafra land to kill unarmed protesters. The only war they have seen is to come down and massacre people who are praying. Because Britain is supporting them, because Britain is covering their backs, so to speak. Daddy Britain is there. They can do whatever they like. Abakiari can do whatever he likes. Britain will protect him because it is in the British interest that a Fulani man is in power. 
it is in the interest of Britain, not all of Britain, some people, some key people, it is in their interest that al majri is in power because they know once al majri is in power, people will be selling their generators now because there will never be any light. You'll be selling sumo because they know there will be never, ever be pipe bomb water. Never. It's impossible. People will be digging their boreholes all the time. Yeah, pharmaceutical companies are making so much money because every time you'll be sick, if not malaria, it's typhoid. And all the medicines are coming from abroad. You think they don't know what they're doing? You think they don't know? So it is in the interest of neo-colonialists that al Majri is in power because they know they cannot do. They know that they are useless. Beyond useless. Are you telling me that in a normal world, Britain, who is the colonial master of the zoo, somebody as stupid as Tanko, a Sharia judge was appointed the chief justice of a common law system, that Britain will not say anything? You heard, during all our fights to free Shore, Dasuki, and, El and El Saki must be free. We, we, we need to fight for him as well. Of course, it was very foolish of them to burn US and, and, and Israeli flags. Very, very foolish of them to do so. But we must fight for El Saki to be released. Did, did Britain ever say anything? It was only the time that US senators started complaining that Britain now had the courage to send out a tweet to say you must release the show or uh, 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 respect the rule of law. Only when and um, only when we have done the hard work on the ground in America are they now coming out to say, oh, you must release him. But Britain has been there from day one. They see evil happening. British High Commissioner in, in Abuja, they see Satan, they see Lucifer with their two eyes. Yeah, that's a rock. They keep quiet because of what they are gaining. Because of what they are gaining. Thankfully, not many people in Britain are as evil as some of them that write their foreign policy, to be honest with you. They are pure evil. I will continue. Religion has been there from day one. It's not going to go away. They said that the, the population is uh, half and half, uh, 91 million Muslim, 91, uh, rubbish, pure bunker. You must understand this very, very clearly. Very, very clearly. Please listen to this very, very clearly, please. In spite of everything they have done, they said that he could pick Toby and uh, and uh, and uh, Abakiari, uh, answering the name Buhari through uh, uh, Jubril, picked um, Osibajo, who is uh, the uh, two southern Christians, as they say. It did not stop Islam and religion being a key part of the election. Now listen to this carefully. Some of you don't know what is happening in the zoo, but I will tell you tonight anyway. We have time. There is a leader of an extremist Islamic sect called Izala, I-Z-A-L-A, Sheikh Sani Yahya Jinger. Sheikh Sani Yahya Jinger. He spoke in a video in Hausa language and asked his followers never ever to vote for the PDP candidate who he was Atiku then. Despite the fact that Atiku is a Muslim, do you know his reason why? These are people that tomorrow say, oh, Nigeria, we must do everything we can to keep Nigeria united. I'm saying this to myself so that Igbo Efulefu governors can listen. The idiotic politicians can listen. Every fool planning for 2023, 2098, 2047 can listen very carefully to what we are saying and learn from it. Not minding that Atiku was a Muslim. This man called Sheikh Sani Yahaya Jingal spoke in a video to his followers, millions of them. He said that Atiku, this is these are his words. Atiku's running mate is from the Igbo stock, who are Christians. They killed our Sadwana. And because of that, nobody should vote for Atiku, because if you vote for Atiku, that means you're voting for those that killed the Sadwana. Some of you have forgotten that the governor of Kaduna State now planning to come and run, and I know there are some idiots in Biafra land. There are some fools in Biafra land, entire Biafra land. Who may be thinking, oh, I'm very poor, I'm wretched. Oh, my goodness, why don't I support uh, NASA El Rufai's candidacy? Maybe money will come to me and my family. That very selfish way of reasoning. 
is only about yourself. If I was thinking of myself alone, I will be a multi-billionaire in foreign currency. You don't know how to make sacrifices. All you know how, all you know to do is to sabotage. All you know to do is to run to the Alamajiri because they know you will come. They know the reason why they are dealing with Oshomole today is because they know there's an endless, it's a conveyor belt, endless supply of idiots from the south. Endless supply. So if one of Shomole goes, another idiot will replace him. They know that very well because you're all very hungry. And before you all say, uh, if you're hungry as well, you do something. I spent all my money funding Radio Biafra to the point that I was sleeping in a car. Hungry. I didn't give up. I will go to work, make a, a lot of money. I will come back and I will spend it on Radio Biafra shortwave. If you think short, short wave is cheap, go and try it yourself and see how expensive it is. So we've been there. Don't come and tell us nonsense. Oh, my family was hungry. Because of that, I had to sell my conscience. Some of you will fight for Erufai. And I will tell you what he said. He said, listen carefully to Erufai. <laughs> These are your leaders. When they talk about the elite and the leaders in the zoo, this is, this is, I, I'm only building a, I've not even started, I'm only building a background to what is happening in the zoo so that you all can learn and understand, reason and think. He spoke on, on Channel's television, that's Alamajiri station. He said, this is from El Rufayim. What if I tell you that no matter who I choose as my running mate, even if I choose the Pope, 67% of the Christians in Southern Kaduna have made up their minds that they will never vote for me. But people come ignorantly in the in the outside world. They say, oh, but the North is all Muslims. No, of course not. Southern Kaduna is they are all Christians. But they have been subdued. The mistake that these southern these these people, southern Kaduna Middle West, the mistake they keep making is that they keep thinking that Biafra is against them. That should Biafra go, they will suffer. No, you are making a grave mistake. Biafra is your redemption. Only Biafra, I'm telling you the truth. Only Biafra can save people in that very zoo. Only Biafra can. Nothing else will. I said, I said nothing else, no amount of restructuring, no amount of warm words. And I'm happy to hear today that Khan is saying they are fed up of the condolence message coming from Asarok. They are tired. Anytime a Christian is killed, there's a condolence message. Rubbish. They are tired. What is the solution? I want people to sit down this night or morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, to actually contemplate what the solutions are to the problems not just lamenting but what are the solutions the only solution viable is close your eyes and think of how we were before the white man came the people that put us in this mess is the british and it's a good thing that actually the french government have come out to say that colonialism is evil it's the british and because they see themselves as God, you know, they are very proud, they are God. We went to Africa, you know, those dumb monkeys, we created nations for them, and they are there. Nobody should touch the boundaries, it should be that way. Who told you that? Southern Sudan broke away, albeit there are teething problems there. Eritrea emerged. And so will other nations emerge. Now, if it is the wish of Eritrea in the future to go and join Ethiopia in a bigger, wider, whatever country it is their prerogative give it to them that is the essence of democracy to ask the people what they want isn't that what we're asking for isn't that what we're asking for he said even if i choose the pope as my running mate they won't vote for me the issue is this from the mouth listen very carefully from the mouth of the governor of kaduna state right now El Rufai, he said kaduna state is divided from the mouth, if Kaduna State is divided in the north, if Kaduna State is divided, how do you think you can put the country together? It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. But we don't understand. It's entirely up to them if they will or not. But we are moving on, we are marching on relentlessly. You see, I said it from the beginning. By the time Chilekena Rumonyake, God is my witness, by the time we are done with the zoo, you see the name Nigeria will no longer exist. They will answer Arewa in the north. You will answer Duduwa or whatever name they choose, and will be Biafra. Should these people then decide to come together or middle belt if they're strong enough to stand their ground? If they're strong enough to stand their ground, they can emerge as one nation if they have one common identity or one common way of life. 
if a governor can say to you that Kaduna State is divided, how about Nigeria as a whole? But the impression they give is that the North is one, one North is a lie, deception. They want one North, but divided South. Uh, 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 Midwest, uh, uh, Niger Delta, uh, South South. But in the North, they are all one North. Despite the fact that in Kaduna, Kaduna, you won't believe this, in Kaduna State, Christians outnumber Muslims in Kaduna. I'm not talking about Christians that came from elsewhere, from Jaffa land to, to, to reside in Kaduna. No, indigenous people, southern Kaduna, there are more Christians than Muslims. You, can, you don't have such dichotomy anywhere in the south. But they give you the impression that the south is divided. No, that from the mouth of the governor of um, Kaduna state, on Channels TV, he said that, the north, that Kaduna state is divided. Apart from Governor L. Rufai, these people also recognize that Buhari had an agenda to Islamize Nigeria, even during the campaign. Some of one who were saying this, you didn't listen, but of course, they, you know, the good thing is that it's good to be, to be underestimated in life. If they knew how far we would go in the pursuit of uh, Biafra under IPOB, oh my goodness, they wouldn't have let us get to, the, to where we are today. They thought we are... Uh, Miss Grants, we are real barrow pushers. Uh, they are, they are touts. They are, they are all those sorts of names. And the more names they call us, the more infused, the more energized we become. And what we have done is to undermine them, and we'll keep doing it. That by the time the zoo is crumbling, it won't come to Britain as a surprise. They will see that the the more runs they handed over power to in the north are as useless as useless can be. That's what we're trying to do. We are trying to say that, okay, if you're not happy with our agitation for self-determination, let us show you what they're doing in Nigeria. We, we, we will expose Nigeria to the world, and that's what we're doing. Only we, We've only done about 9% um, of the job. Only 9%, and the whole place is crumbling. They're not talking about the structure because of IPOB. They know they're dreaming. They're wasting their time. The only solution is Biafra, and they understand it very, very well. Outsiders are telling you that the country called Nigeria has an Islamization agenda. Remember what Femi Adeshino said, that anybody claiming that the nation has an agenda to impose Islam on Nigeria uh, is false and, and wicked. That the objective is to stoke up religious division for political gains. But you had El Rufai. Here you have somebody in Asurok talking rubbish. But El Rufai said that his own state is divided along Christians and Muslims. They don't see eye to eye. Do you see the confusion that reigns at the heart of the zoo? You know, some of these Pentecostal pastors, I know that some of you will hopelessly and foolishly go to your crossover night and all the nonsense that you call it. Some of these pastors don't allow you to reason. They don't let you reason properly. I'm telling you the truth. Only if they can stand and speak and stand on the truth, you will see what will happen in the zoo. In Adamawa state, again, there is a substantial Christian population, but some of you don't know this. Adamawa, that's the state of um, Atikov Waka. Hmm. Over the last four years, listen carefully, four years, over the last four years, Muslim Fulani Jihadists, that is what they call them. This is an international organization, a think tank. They call them Muslim Fulani Jihadists. They have destroyed Christian communities in Adamawa state. And I understand the reason why somebody from Adamawa may want to say to IPOB, go oh, down, have Biafra, we want one Nigeria. Because they think that, even the Yorubas as well, they think that if they have Biafra in Nigeria, it's safer for them. At least not all of them will be killed. They are thinking, look at Christians in Adamawa. They are thinking that, oh, if Biafra should go, then um, their life is over. Quite literally over. Because the, the Muslim Fulani jihadists will kill all of them. But we are saying to them that Biafra will defend them. We will defend every Christian, wherever you are, inside Nigeria. What Trump and Johnson needs to do, because since they've come out to say, oh, we'll defend Christians, don't bring American soldiers. Only a free Biafran nation can do it. And I am saying to Christians in Kaduna, Christians in Adamawa, Christians in, in, in Niger, in all the Christian states of the Middle Belt, your only guarantee, the only way you can remain the way you are is 
if Biafra comes, or else forget all these um, warm words. We will fight for you. You'll be dying. You'll be you are being slaughtered every day. Nobody will save you. That is why Christians in, in Kaduna, in Adamawa, you must support the emergence of Biafra. Only Biafra can save you. Do you think we will stay in Biafra and allow them to? Of course not. And once there is Biafra, this full and madness will be cured overnight. To be cured for as long as Nigeria remains one. They'll keep killing. They'll keep driving their cattle into our farms. One of our mothers today was raped to death in a boy. They were caught. He said they only did one round. Have you have you seen the news? When I was saying that they're raping our mothers, did you believe me? When I said that what Umahi is doing in Ebony is that is the same thing that all of them do because we don't listen very well. It will lead to the destruction of, of our way of our way of life. None of you you didn't listen. He said, no, he's uh, stoking, he's uh, causing problems. And um, I want to assure us a rock tonight. You see, the testimony of the family of the rape victim in Ebony. You see the coverage in some newspaper and all the rest of it. Be rest assured, every frontline politician in the world will receive it. Let me see how you're going to lie through your lobbying firms that, uh, uh, that this very information is, is propaganda. The family is there, they've been interviewed. We have all the records. So what we are doing is to show the world the level of primitivity, satanic primitivity inside Nigeria that nobody can cure. If these people can hide the death of Buhari from everybody, if they can try to deceive all of you cowards, all of you cowards in the zoo, cowards who are calling other people cowards, you wretched cowards in the zoo called Nigeria. If they can deceive you and tell you that young man is Buhari and you believe, believe you me, you have no redemption. You have no redemption. Your lives are over. Go to the same church now, do tarry night and all that nonsense. You come back the same year, no water, no electricity, no good hospitals, no good roads. The same problem, even worse next year. But at the uh, come come New Year's Eve 2020, you still go to tarry night. Talking, you people, you make me sick. Absolutely sick. That I went to the US, and one of our mothers said to me, I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak out of tone before I annoy Elohim that sent me to do this very work. If not that I was sent to do this work by God Almighty in heaven, I am telling you, I will have nothing to do with... Some of you know me, I don't have any friends. What am I doing with your stupid friendship? People who cannot reason very well. The same thing you keep doing day after day, week after week, month after month year after year no improvement you keep doing it if you're lucky and you get a job you say oh it's because my pastor prayed for me when people are dying they are slaughtering you every blessed day every blessed day they are slaughtering you it is unbelievable some of you will remember the former speaker of the house of reps his name is yakubu dogara do you know he was also targeted as part of the elections because he's from a Christian minority in Bauchi state? Do you know there are Christians in Bauchi? Do you know that Yakubu Dogara is from Bauchi and he's a Christian? When these idiots come and tell you, oh, the whole of the north, they're all Muslims, they're lying to you. And because of your cowardly nature and your fear, you see there are soldiers on the streets with the AK-47, you accept and say, oh, yes, they, they, they must be, everybody in the north is a Muslim. Who told you that? Dogara is a Christian from Bauchi state. Albeit that the Muslims, they dominate because they shout, they kill, they slaughter. And all the, the Christians are afraid. They're all frightened. Oh, they, please don't say anything. You know, we are one Nigeria. If you say something, they will kill you. You know, we are one Nigeria. And you keep emboldening them. And they keep coming. And they keep killing. They keep coming. And they keep killing. Now, listen very carefully. There is a man called, he's a professor, an imaginary professor, Professor Sally Sushehu. He placed an advertorial in Daily Trust newspaper ahead of the last elections in the zoo in February of this year. A full page advertorial. Do you know what he said? He accused Dogara of neglecting Muslims who were displaced in the state after sectarian violence. You know what they do? As you are trying to stop them in a boy state, they come in, they bring al from outside, they start a war, they start killing people. And once the army come in to say, Oh, maintain peace and uh, order and all that rubbish, 
They all say, oh, we are homeless, so uh, put us somewhere to live. But before they started or they instigated the, the violence, they were in Kanu, they were in Katsina, they were in Sokoto. They now brought them down to come and occupy people's towns and villages. And Dogara said, no, the Muslims went to work. Now, this is what one of the paragraphs uh, 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 in the advertorial, what uh, uh, I'll read it for you. It says here, this is from a Professor Salisu Shehu. For your information, before the 2011 crisis, there were three Jumau mosques and 45 daily prayer mosques in Tafawa Balewa Township. No work, no school, they don't do anything. 45 daily prayer mosques and um, the two Juma mosques. I am sure you may know those figures, but I have no doubt that you know for sure all of these mosques, except the one at the police divisional office, we are destroyed and ruined by the people of your faith. The question is, why do you fail to include at least even the central mosque of Tafar Belewa in the list of mosques you want to renovate? A politician is not going to renovate a mosque with government constitution with the constituency money given to him. That is what is happening in the zoo that some of you do not know. The objective of placing this advert in a newspaper. And you must know that Daily Trust is a Muslim Fulani Janjaweed uh, Alamajiri newspaper. You must know. Uh, if you don't know that, then you're, you're sick in the brain. Daily Trust, you know, is a, is a Fulani paper. They are there to promote Islam, to promote anything that will keep Nigeria one, to allow the jihadists to keep coming. The only day they will, raise, they will rise up and tell you to hell with all of you and raise their green flag is the day they have succeeded in sacking the last villages in the coastal regions of Biafra land. Any day they get to Boni and they pick up everything and start building their Juma mosque and their daily prayer room, you will see they, they will raise their, their green flag and say to hell with all of you. Now, we are sounding, as I've, as I've been saying before, every prophecy, every prediction has come to pass. Almost all, by none, have all come to pass. What did some of you do with it? What did you do with it? They will go and uh, and they recruit some idiots, disgruntled fools, chased away because of their hunger. And uh, some other idiots uh, cloned accounts with evil names and be talking rubbish. And some of you are busy responding to idiots who don't exist. <laughs> Feel sorry for some of you, honestly. We are not going to go into what some of um, our people said, but we know what became of the zoo. Serap, which is a group, I think is um, one of the socio-economic rights and accountability project, all the these all send letter, isn't it? All they just send a letter. They said it's important to send you this message that electoral related violence, intimidation and killing will not be tolerated under your watch. Who is going to police this pronouncement? Every time we are tired, we won't tolerate this. So that is not going to happen again. It keeps happening. Today, they have raped and killed one of our mothers in a boy. If we retaliate tomorrow, they will go and tell the run to America, they will go to Britain. Britain will be the one to tell America, can't you see? IPOB is violent. They, they killed people in a boy. Can't you see they're violent? But when they raped and killed one of our mothers, nobody complained. Britain will not write to America. The 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 uh, uh, propagandists, their lobbies, the lobbying firm will not write and say, oh, it's very sad that a Biafran woman was raped to death on the 31st no on the 20 on the 30th of december of 2019 no they will never say that so what you expect us to do is for ipob to keep quiet they rape and kill our mother and we keep quiet and then they rape another two another three and we keep quiet by the time you know it it's free for all but when i was saying they were raping our mothers many years ago some of you never believed it and i said they will rape they will abduct they will kill us and the world will say nothing is that not happening now? That we need to band together as a people and resist this evil before it's too late. And some of you were saying, oh, we are in APC. It's our turn. Some idiots. Please, Buhari, can you give us the presidency? Can you believe such rubbish? As if the presidency is all. So the same nonsense that Aziki we did, the same rubbish. Test presidents for four years and remain a slave for 400 years. That's what they want. Fools. They will never succeed this time. 
never ever succeed. Now, some of you do not know what Sharia is doing in the zoo, but we will proceed. There are, these are the Sharia states, uh, Sokoto, uh, uh, Sokoto, Kebi, uh, uh, Niger, Zamfara, Katsina, Kanu, Kaduna, Bauchi, Jigawa, Yobe, Bronu, Gombe. They have effectively removed themselves from the constitution of Nigeria because there is nowhere in the constitution of Nigeria or its amendment where it allows for Sharia. And this is the launch pad of four terror groups in West Africa. This is why Nigerian, Arab, well not Nigeria, Northern Nigeria, Arawa is the hotbed of terrorism in the whole of West Africa, in the whole of Sahel. It is called Sharia and the Nigeria Constitution. <laughs> now listen very carefully. I said this night I will tie, you know, the dead, Buhari is dead, forget about Jubri. Buhari, the dead one, I will tie him to the violence happening in the zoo. I want to prove to the world, I know that Britain is listening, the whole world listen when we preach this very gospel. We want them to know, I want America to know, I want the whole of Asia to know, I want every South America to know that Buhari, though they are governing in his name right now, is the chief terrorist you have in the zoo. I'm going to prove it. Everybody said that the world can know. Forget all the nonsense they're telling you. They think they can, you know, we are many. Everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world it, there is no way on this earth they can keep borrowing money all the money they're borrowing they're using it to fight ipod to be bribing government bribing officials oh don't let them come in don't try to see them that's all they're doing all the money they are borrowing they are borrowing it to try to stop ipod are they succeeding the answer is no they can never succeed they have never succeeded before they will not succeed now they will never succeed ever never ever ever because we are clever we are intelligent we are beer friends we don't have money that is true but uh we are doing something that millionaires cannot do and they know it they zoom they know it they'll keep growing money until they go bankrupt fighting ipob they are finished and they know they're finished when they go to the world to tell them they said to them oh uh, they're fighting for for you no know, we don't support separation but the 12 sharia states of the north have already separated to form an Islamic enclave, that's what they have done. The, why can't you allow me to go and form my own nation? Why must I go to National Assembly in Abuja? When you are forming your own Sharia, did you go to the National Assembly? Or you are just mouthing your rubbish, pretending, oh, we are still in one Nigeria, even though it is Sharia, it is under one Nigeria. But you went outside the constitution to go and frame, or should I say, agree an amendment which was not voted for or voted upon by those that uh, the people claim they voted for to go to Abuja. To handle such matters that is a fact they think they can deceive people they can deceive you they cannot deceive us we are ipob we are undeceivable you can't deceive us not at all some of you know that buhari uh, they they claim that uh, uh, uh jubril won the election they, they call him buhari so sometimes when i say buhari and i'm referring to jubril you know it's jubril who is there Kotsi of abakiari everybody knows that buhari is gone dead the wife uh, uh, Aisha have told us many times that we can, of course, Miss Yoji, we can never listen. We don't, we are not having able to reason. It's impossible. Trump is being impeached because of one phone call to a president in the zoo called Nigeria. Uh, they brought somebody from Sudan to replace your dead president and you can't do And that idiot is presiding over the worst phase of massacre of innocent people in the process of a very crude jihadi invasion and they're all very quiet and tomorrow you say you you are equal to a white man who told you that mad people everywhere we are going on about trying to establish we are trying to establish establish that buhari is the grandfather of terrorism in the zoo the dead one, or even including Abakiari. These are the people. Full and politicians are the ones funding terrorism in Nigeria. That's what we are here for. And I believe we have laid the foundation of the of the inevitable collapse of the zoo. Now we must go on to let the whole world understand how we have come to this conclusion. You must understand it. We must understand it. 
when they got the idiot and put Jubilee in power in the name of Buhari, they said he will spare no effort in the battle against Islamic militancy. They love speeches. They write it and they post it. They say, oh, you know, Britain will say, oh, USA, can't you see he's doing something? He's saying something about it. But things are getting worse. Worse now than it was under Jonathan. And he went on to say that uh, you shall be able to go to bed knowing that you are safe and that your constitutional rights remain in safe hands. Exactly what the Fulanis told the Housers before they got the gullible Houser people to kill their own kings. The same thing. I will respect your right. Even if I, I don't release you when a court says I should release you, it is your constitutional right to remain in jail. And some of you are jumping up and down, clapping for him. <laughs> very, very sad indeed. Now, he went on to say that the problem is that uh, Nigeria constitution is superior. They asked him a question. He said that Sharia is put on the same level with customary laws. Have you heard of them uh, saying uh, anything about customary law? The, of course, the answer is no. Its relevance is limited to inheritance, marriage, etc. Is that how you funded the Hizba police in Ken that will go about destroying shops and businesses owned by their friends that sell alcohol? You see the way they deceive you? They tell you oh, it's, it's, it's limited when they write to the West, to the, to the very God. I'm not going to say they're gullible, they know what they're doing because of their oil interest, of course, which uh, I hasten to add is also guaranteed and protected in Biafra land anyway. They said it's, it's limited to inheritance and marriage. So Sharia is not a problem. And I'm asking them, who formed the Hizba police in Ghana? They can't answer, can they? Unbelievable. Um, with the right to arrest and detain and flog people as they, they deem fit. Whereas in 2001, this same man, before he died, this Buhari, Buhari in whose name the zoo is being run by Abakiyari, what did he say? And they, they, they went to Google and they paid Google lots of money, thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to remove every reference to this. That is why when you Google, if you go to Google now and you, you write in uh, 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 Buhari, I will, I will support Shari. Yeah all over nigeria you will not see any news item but if you go to the images you will see somebody cleverly captured the same newspaper that carried it it's still there the news link is missing but you can see the this day front page you will see it there very clear where it says this is according to the man in whose name they are committing all these atrocities. Listen very carefully. See, people are very foolish. I want Nigerians to reason for once. Only once. If, he, if it's only tonight that Nigerians can reason in all their life, they would have done, some, done something noble. What did Buhari say when he was alive? He said, I will continue to show openly and inside me the total commitment to the Sharia movement that is sweeping all over Nigeria. Not minding that there are sizable Christian populations in the north, he doesn't care. Where it is sweeping all over Nigeria, I don't know. Maybe with the help of Yoruba Muslims, you know, those ones, uh, may God help them. And I don't know. He said, I will show both secretly and openly my commitment to Sharia. And what did he do? He went and appointed, in his name, they appointed a Sharia judge to become the chief justice of Nigeria. And that same Sharia judge also said that Sharia must be included in the constitution of Nigeria. Now, what other proof do you need? What other proof do you need? Are you that dumb? You cannot reason. I know we are blacks. You know, sometimes common sense is a bit difficult for us. But how difficult is it? In 2001, Buhari said, and I repeat, I will continue to show openly and inside me the total commitment to the Sharia movement that is sweeping all over Nigeria. He went on to say, God willing, we will not stop the agitation. Oh, they were even in agitation then. No? We will not stop the agitation for the total implementation of Sharia in the country. He went on to say, Sharia is a legal responsibility which God has given to us within the context of one Nigeria to continue to uphold the practice of Sharia wholeheartedly in one Nigeria. Are you listening? 
Are you foolish? Are some of you still deluded? Are some of you so hopeless that you cannot see? I know that we don't want to fight another war. A lot of people are saying, oh, we don't want to fight another war. But that is the mistake you're making. You're showing signs of weakness to the Alamajiri Fulani North. That is why they raped our mother. That is why they keep killing us. That is why they came to Zowan and killed. That was why they went to Nimbo, they massacred. That was why they came to Anna. Because you are telling them that no matter what you do to me, I will never fight back. If you slap me on one cheek, I'll turn the other one, you slap me as well. You can rape my mother if you like. You can abduct my wife if you like. You can abduct our children if you like and hold them captive forever. We will do nothing. Nigeria will be one. Do you see how stupid you sound? Do you see how stupid some of you sound? The same man that some of you are jumping up and down, he's a general, he's this... He was the one that said, I will Islamize you. That's the meaning of it. He's only using Sharia to cover it up. What is the meaning of Sharia? They are agitated, they are in agitation. Nobody called them terrorists. Nobody went and shot them. Dead. Nobody massacred them. Nobody. They are in agitation. But IPOB agitation is somehow bad. So the British is very bad. But when Buhari was agitating for Sharia, Britain said nothing. When the 12 states of the north broke away to form their Sharia, Britain, the granddaddy, the, the creator, the messiah of Nigerians, they said nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now you understand, don't you? Now you do understand. They say I insult them, but I will insult because if you I don't feel sorry for myself. I am also included until Biafra comes. I will continue to be hard on myself. The thing about black people is, I call it the Democratic Party syndrome in America. Everybody knows in the US that it's only the, the Republicans that can help you become the man or woman you're destined to be, or to become, so to speak. They know that very well. It was the Republicans that fought against slavery. It was Republicans that actually um, made it possible for the father, the father of Condoleezza Rice to be able to vote in the South. Who we are the godfathers of slavery in America. It's not the Democratic Party. These Democrats you're saying. It's them that so some of you don't even know this. It's the Democrats who are the slave owners, slave masters in America. It was Republicans that were fighting to save black people. But look at the way they turned history upside down. The same thing is happening in the zoo. The people who have come to kill you, you embrace them. Those fighting to liberate you, you jettison and you reject them. Hmm. Unbelievable. Go even Guardian newspaper carried it. Go and Google it now. Nobody can accuse Guardian or this day or any of the zoo papers or Nigerian papers for supporting the Afrika. No, go and Google now as I'm live on the air. Buhari calls for Sharia in all states. Google it. Buhari calls for Sharia in all states. It was carried by the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian is as conservative as they come, isn't it? They support one Nigeria is owned by somebody from a door. So they want one Nigeria so that um, the brilliance of Biafrans will not, you know, put them to shame. Or some of them, I must say. He said this thing in 2001 and 2015. These statements, they mirror the legal controversy that is rooted in the conflict between the secularism provision of the Federal Constitution of Nigeria and the number of state laws and practices that allows for the application of Sharia beyond the sphere of personal laws. These are facts proven beyond every reasonable doubt. Nigeria is a Sharia country. Those of you who are Christians, championing for one Nigeria, you're championing for one Sharia, one Islamized Nigerian geopolitical space. That is a fact of life. That is what they have all signed up to. That was why when Buhari died, they thought to themselves, oh my goodness, how are we going to continue? This is our education. They said, let us go to Sudan and get somebody to replace him. We found somebody who looks like him. And what happened to those two people who recruited Jubril? Dead today, they are dead. Are they not dead? They are dead today. So they will not say. And they used, because Tinubu wants to be president of Nigeria, they used Tinubu's influence in the Yoruba land to convince their media to support what is, in essence, evil. When they were said they were doing the fast check against the scientific evidence we presented, I didn't know it was a Yoruba boy who was writing it. 
AFP contracted a Yoruba boy to write a fact check to say that what we said about uh, Jibril is not true. A Yoruba person. And where are they today? Now they have realized that they're dealing with a monster. That monster is not Bukhari, it's Jibril. The real, the, the real Satan is Abakiari. At the, you see all these things. At the end of the day, they will do all they are doing. They say, oh, now Buhari is dead. We are bringing him back. Uh, according to custom Islamic laws, you cannot see him. They will put something in the ground and tell you it's Buhari. They buried him. Watch and see what is going to happen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Zoom. Zoom. Now, this group also recognized that Nigeria's transition from northern dominated military rule, all military rule in the zoo, from the north, all the time they have been is always from the north. The, the, the only time they allow the southerner, of course, Obasanjo was by the of Obasanjo is like good Lord Jonathan. He didn't carry out a coup in his own right. They allowed him to be there so that the north can buy the Yorubas over and say, Oh, can't you see your son is also a head of state? It was uh, Motala Muhammad was killed, Motala Muhammad was killed, and then Abbasanjo took over. Abbasanjo didn't do a coup in his own right. The same thing happened to Jonathan. Jonathan is Yeradua died, and Jonathan took over. Nobody actually voted for him in the first place. The, the second round of voting that he won was so to fulfill all righteousness. So the North will say, okay, get away with it. Just leave him more four years, and the power will come back to us. After that four years, uh, didn't they take it back? Of course they did. They chased Jonathan away. Now they're looking for him to kill him. And I'll get to the idiot that says his cousin later on, mouthing rubbish. I will destroy him with facts and figures as always, as we are doing tonight. Since section 275 of the zoo constitution allows them to create Sharia court of appeal. That was how they said to create Sharia court all over the place. And with it, Sharia law, now as part of the zoo constitution. And after saying all of this, some people will say that um, somehow Nigeria is one. We are all one. Unbelievable. The Sharia debate is still raging, as you well know. Well, when I say Sharia, I mean the Islamization debate. Forget about Sharia. The name Sharia doesn't make any meaning. It is Islamization. They are Islamizing everybody. I hope they're writing all these things down, some of you who are learning. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> some Muslims, especially the Chief Justice of the zoo, appointed by Abba Kiyari in the name of uh, uh, Muhammad Bukhari, they have called for a restoration of, listen carefully what they're asking for. They called for Sharia enhancing constitutional amendments. So when, listen to, people should write this down, please. And I'm sure that our deputy is, is, um, is, uh, it will make sure that this program is sent out in four parts, in four um, one-hour parts, so that the world will understand it. Listen carefully, please. And those I didn't warn you. This is Eve, um, New Year's Eve broadcast. What Tanko Muhammad is asking for is a Sharia enhancing constitutional amendment, including restoration of, listen, sub unit political autonomy to the level attained in the first republic which was what ayu adebanjo was asking for allow people listen carefully to this allow people to go back to how they were in the first republic which is the north the west and the east but Almagri said no Fulani said no no we won't have that we have what we this unitary system there is now but within it we are going to allow sub autonomous islamic enclaves to emerge they want to grant unlimited jurisdiction to the Sharia Court of Appeal. And they also want a broad constitutional recognition of Sharia as a legal, listen, and ideological system of its own as an alternative or co-equal with the imposed Western legal and ideological system. Now take it to the bank. That's what's happening in the zoo. They want to bring in Sharia. That was why they brought in Tanko. They want to bring in Sharia and speed up their Islamization process so that they will get to a point where all the things they have done will now be irreversible. Are you following? 
are you following that is the reason why when buhari died they they cried and wept and said what are we going to do somebody come up with the idea let's go to sudan and bring somebody and that's what i have done and after expensive surgery and makeup the idiot appears once in a while they coach him he talks and he disappears no live interviews no difficult questions absolutely nothing unbelievable isn't it they want to i want you to record this what tanko is asking for is a restoration of subunit political autonomy full and new autonomy so all the areas you now have full and headsmen camping they will have political autonomy they will have their own emir they have their own sargi before you know it is all over for everybody i mean absolutely everybody but that wouldn't stop you from going to your useless um, local church to go and mouth rubbish isn't it your land is going our mothers are being raped things are being torn to shreds the man in whose name they are running the zoo muhammad Buhari, came out and said nothing can stop our agitation for islam nothing can stop agitation for sharia and some of you are there lazily sleepwalking into eternal damnation now do you understand it now do you understand everything i tell you is gospel pure gospel take it anywhere you like it is gospel pure gospel now they understand now they have done all they can and will continue to do to make sure <laughs> <laughs> that they enslave you completely and totally. Now I have told you what they are planning to do to you. What they are planning to do to you. Mm -hmm. Even some people even ask. The same this day newspaper asked in 2014, is Buhari a fundamentalist or demagogue? Go and read it. All the, you know the thing is that all these facts are there for people to make up their mind. But the Yoruba people, because of Tinubu and because they want presidency, you know, to spite the evils, uh, somehow, you know, will support him you know they they do what they call long-term political calculation if we support this man from the north he he gave it to a passenger so they will also give it to us again now you understand instead of um doing what is right they say oh everybody you have to fight for it you have to sell your own candidate people who can reason they are the so-called elite they are sensible they are intelligent <laughs> but you can see how wasted they all are he called for total sharia in nigeria in 2001 he made this statement in bbc i was a service no no sorry it was um what's the name of that program again uh no no it was not bbc what's the name of that program again i've forgotten i'm sure somebody will tell me in a minute but i'll tell you the exact time 9 32 in the evening 21 32 27 of august 2001 was the day that Buhari called for total Sharia in Nigeria. So when you see Boko Haram asking for a enthronement of Sharia, when you hear ISIS in West Africa asking for Sharia, when you hear Fulani headsmen asking for Sharia, when you hear Al Qaeda in the Maghreb asking for Sharia, when you hear the Chief Justice of the Federation, Tanko Mohammed, asking for Sharia, uh, do you know the game is over, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm giving you the date, the time. Buhari said this. 9 32 which is 28 minutes to 10 p.m on the 27th of august 2001 so i'm sure britain is listening i am sure that all those politicians we met in america they're all listening to this that this is the source of terrorism in the zoo this is the man that brought terrorism it's nothing to do with um drought climate change no 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 of that rubbish this is the man who brought it buhari brought terrorism into the zoo and i'm proving it tonight zoo has been shaken listen very carefully in february 2000 over 3,000 people were killed by muslims in the north in kaduna especially over the introduction of sharia they introduced Sharia and they went on killing people. When people hear about uh, uh, Christian and Muslims, they clash. People don't know it is the Muslims who are killing the Christians. Because the Christians don't have any means to fight back. The Muslims are in the, not the Muslims, the Fulani people are in the army, they are in the police, they are in the air force, everywhere they are. 
and they specialize in fighting local battles inside local battles with you they never go outside you never hear them posted outside i want you to ask buratai which theater did you fight outside nigeria before where have you ever fought a war before as a, as a commanding officer as a, as a general in the battlefield nowhere it's only in bizu we are having operation operation lafayette stopping women and killing children that's all they do that's all that nigerian army does it never goes to war never fights anybody never won any territory for nigeria never won any prestige for nigeria only to kill civilians and as long as britain is protecting them britain britain whoever they send to nigeria is bribed whichever high commissioner goes there lives as a millionaire they give them money they give them private oil concessions they give them anything they ask for to distort the truth and to lie to friend and commonwealth office all the time that was why i have given an example that was why the british high commissioner in abuja doing all this saga involving show she never said or is it the he or she can she never said anything because they enjoy it if and say, oh no but nigeria is a sub who told you nigeria when did nigeria become sovereign britain decides what happens in nigeria Three thousand people killed. What did Christians do? They went to pray. They went to fast. They went to sleep over. They cross over. Heaven knows what they call it. And that one is gone. And the more they kill you, this happened in two thousand. The more they kill you, the more you keep quiet. The more they kill more people. Do you understand it? The more they kill you, the more you keep quiet. The more they kill more people. The same thing happened to the Jews. They were killing them all over Europe until after the Second World War. They said enough is enough. We have to find the state of israel they went to israel from there and they can now defend jews all over the world the same thing i'm now saying to christians all over nigeria tonight a strong independent biafra is for your own good because nigeria will then know that if they touch you we will come after them they will leave you alone no matter where you are but if you think that you can stay in one nigeria and this, this stupidity will keep going round in a in a circle like uh, people who are on the council going round and round and round and round that will solve anything, then you're you're deranged. Then you are deranged. Three thousand people killed in riots in Kaduna. <laughs> One Nigeria. And let's see unite this country. They keep killing you. The same people killing you are telling you let's unite. And you listen to them. Oh dear me. Oh dear me. Go to Vanguard, go to sorry, Guardian is there. Buhari calls for Sharia in all states. And you're telling me that they don't know what they're doing, that they are not the leaders of all these um, terrorist groups all over the place. His supporters in the north defended him when he said it. They defended him. They defended him. He was the one who told people to vote for. Uh, only Muslims don't vote for for Christians. <laughs> you know, he also made his comment at a seminar organized by the Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria, a body that they set up in the late uh, in the late um, um, 2020, sorry, 2010s. Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria and Christians are there dancing all over the place foolishly. Unbelievable. You know what he said? What remains, this is from Buhari, according to AFP, you know AFP, the, the Ocean French Press, which is um is a French news agency. Nobody can accuse them of the propaganda or lying. After all, uh, they are the ones now benefiting from Nigeria. They give them so much money, AFP, so that when they're killing people, they won't write about it. Everybody will think Nigeria is peaceful and all loving, isn't it? AFP, you know what AFP said? AFP wrote, what remains for Muslims, according to Buhari, what remains for Muslims in Nigeria is for them to redouble their efforts, educate Muslims on the need to promote the full implementation of Sharia. It is the agenda. They are pursuing it two ways. They want to use Tanko Mohammed to pursue it constitutionally, and they want to use Boko Haram and all the terror groups that they are funding to pursue it militarily. They will subdue you. So they don't get you via constitution, they get you via violence. And meanwhile, some of you don't know what we're encountering abroad. Meanwhile, they're telling people all over the world that the reason why, they call it farmer header clash. 
So all the while that they are killing people, you're shouting in your local newspapers in Nigeria, oh, they are, they are friendly husband are here. They have killed us here. They have left us here. You know what they say? They are raping your mothers because of drought, because of climate change. Anything the Fulani does is climate change. You blame it on climate change. You see how they deceived you. And they employed news agencies around the world, very clever consultants, lobbies in every state capital of the world, paying them hundreds, millions of pounds and dollars to throttle out this line. So when we go and complain and say, these are the things that the Fulani al jihadists are doing, they say, no, 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 it's climate change. It's, it's, there's a clash. I say, how can somebody with AK-47 clash with somebody who is unarmed? How is that possible? They say, oh, it's a clash. But we know it's not a clash. They are the ones killing us. And the, the only time we got together to say we must do something about it, they say, oh, you're a terrorist group. The people who are terrorists, killing people are not terrorists, so it's the people who are trying to organize themselves to say no to this evil. They are the ones who are terrorists. And some Nigerians foolishly joined them. You know, Zoom now. <laughs> Monkeys are unbelievable. Nobody can say that AFP is lying or not speaking the truth. There is also another group of people. They are called Open Doors. In case you don't know who they are, because what I am doing, what I am doing <laughs> is to tell you the truth about what is happening in the zoo. And these are people who are watching from outside. The funny thing is that some of these reports don't get the coverage it needs. We know that CNN has been bought over. We know that every news media in the UK has been bought. They, they know how to distribute money. So they know how to bribe people to shut them up. When I told you they came to bribe me, some, of course, I'm, I know that, uh, you, you know, I can't lie. It's only when they went to go and bribe Shore that it was made public. That's what they do. They bribe. When they try to bribe you and you say no. They try to frustrate you and you say no. They try to kill you. That's what they do. This is open doors. Open doors. They support persecuted Christians all over the world. It's an independent group. Even uh, Archbishop Welby of Canterbury said, I am grateful to Open Doors, who for over half a century have been doing this kind of work and have had a great influence in my life since the early 80s. I know this organization has the utmost integrity and they do their research very carefully and well from Archbishop of Canterbury that loves the zoo. Now, let me tell you what Open Doors said about the zoo called Nigeria. I give you what I give you are the facts and figures. I want to prove to you that the zoo, yeah, I'm a Nigerian. I keep saying it all the time. Once you say you're a Nigerian, I, I, I know there is no hope for you. Absolutely no hope whatsoever. No hope whatsoever. I'm telling you the truth. Now, listen to this very carefully. They ask the question, open doors that the Archbishop of Canterbury, who loves the zoo and the fraud going on the zoo, He's saying they are a, an organization of, of immense integrity. They ask the simple questions. A simple question, rather. Why are Christians persecuted in Nigeria? You know, they will not say Biafrans because Britain won't allow it, you know. They just said Christians. Why are they being persecuted in Nigeria? When you travel and you tell some politicians that have been bred by the zoo, some of you know that, Buhari gave the Clinton Foundation $500 million. So sometimes I'm not sure that um, some lawmakers will actually uh, be unbiased when it comes to saying the, the evil that the full and potent for everybody as the jihadists. Why are Christians being persecuted? And now they went on to say, now listen to this very carefully. In Nigeria, the majority of the Christians live in the south of the country and their religious freedom is to a large extent being respected in the south. But in the north of Nigeria and the Middle Belt, where Christians are in the minority, they face horrific levels of persecution at the hands of Islamic extremists. Islamic extremists. This is what people are facing every place. No longer, they, they come to, to Nsoka. To, to, they are planning an attack in Nsoka, either today or tomorrow, to open the new year. Because they see the governor as being very weak. Cannot defend the people. Also, one, no defense. Nimbo, no defense. 
priests are being beheaded there is no defense we cannot defend our people because the governor is there bowing down before jubilee that is older than that is a curse on us that we have people who cannot rise up and be men very very sad indeed i tell you extremely sad very very sad indeed very very sad indeed do you know what's happening in the north some of you don't know but i will tell you in some northern states christians are now beginning to dress like muslims to make their faith less obvious and reduce the chances of attack christian young people in these states are frequently denied access to higher education and christians have been asked to give up their faith in order to be given work do you know that this is happening in your so-called one nigeria let's be in one nigeria do you know that christians in the north in the middle belt of course we know so one of my cousins had to go to to a polytechnic in the north he had to add idris to his name that was how he was given admission without it he won't be given admission you heard of how a christian girl was denied the the opportunity to study medicine at abu zaria you all aware of that this is what is happening in your so-called one nigeria one nigeria we nigerians one we, we nigerians people are dressing like alamajiri women in the north to escape being killed and you claim you are in one nigeria i want to reassure them once again the, the same way that the state of Israel today is the Boko, is the is the defender of Jews all over the world is how Biafra will defend everybody who is vulnerable, including Christians wherever they are in Nigeria. So every Christian in Nigeria should tonight, as some of you are praying, pray for the coming of Biafra. That is your only savior. The alternative is that you will be beheaded, you'll be Islamized, you'll be killed. Nothing will happen. Where is Leah Shoebu today? Are you still talking about her? The answer is no. Let us bring this a lot more closer home. I'll use the analysis of one of our people here to try and drive home this very point about Sharia. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to build with the time now standing at approximately eight minutes to what time it is? Eight minutes to the top of the hour. Eight minutes to eight to 9 p.m. in Biafra land. 8 to 9 p.m. in Biafra land. 8 minutes to 9 p.m. and the same number of minutes to the top of the hour wherever you are. I want you to understand the root of the crisis in the zoo. Some of you don't understand the Nigerian constitution. You don't understand it. The Nigerian constitution says that everybody is a Nigerian. First, the person who argued this point succinctly is Emma Wale, very beautifully written piece. Nobody can accuse him of being uh, pro Biafra because he's not. He is not, I repeat, he is not. Do you know that some fanatic northerners, Abakiari and his cabal, and the northern Fulani jihadist elected officials are insisting that Muslims are Muslims first and Nigeria second. Therefore, they are entitled to live under the Sharia Islamic system. That is why, have you ever, I keep asking people this, all those people committed these atrocities in the south, have you ever seen them before in a police station? Have you been to a police station before to, and you see al Majri inside the cell? No. The, the, the police commissioner or the nearest army division will write a letter and they will bring him out. Oh, uh -huh. And that will be the end of the case. They see themselves as Muslims first before Nigeria. But you that is being killed, you that your land is being taken from you, you that they are driving their cattle into your mother's farm and destroying every crop, they are raping your mothers, they are abducting your daughters, you You are the one shouting one Nigeria. But those you're shouting one Nigeria for, they don't believe in one Nigeria. They believe that they're Muslims first. Hence, there should be Sharia. And also, your land should be taken from you. Now, do you understand it? Now you, you will understand. Sharia law is meant to be subordinate to the constitution. 
And to impose it as the supreme law of the state is equivalent to violating and overthrowing the constitution. Some of you don't know this. What the 12 states of the north did is a coup. What they did is secession. What they have done is to go contrary to the provisions of their own constitution. But when it comes to what they tell us, oh, but why don't you follow the, 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 the rules of engagement and engage your local politicians when you formed your own Sharia states in the north? Did you engage anybody? The answer is no. I'm pointing all these things out so you understand where your problems are coming from. After being elected, all of these Muslims led by Abba Kiyari, he was, of course, he's not elected, he's the one uh, acting on behalf of the dead Buhari or using Buhari's name to be ruling Nigeria through a proxy, Jibril al Sudani. They argue that Nigeria is theirs. And that Nigeria should adopt Islam as the state religion. In other words, freedom of religion does not entitle some northern states to create an Islamic state within the secular state of Nigeria, but they have done it. They have done it. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. Absolutely nothing. So if you still a cow or a goat in the north they can amputate your hand the person you stole from can decide that they want the case to be tried in the sharia court and your arm can be amputated as a result of it you saw or you heard what they did to the man they claim they found with three women you heard what happened no gambling no tax but when you place a bet on naira bet in Igwacha, in Aba, you know, where or in Lagos, they use the taxes to go and fund al majri in the north. And that is the type of country you want to belong to. That is the type of Nigeria that you want. These Muslim fanatics from outside, from outside the zoo in the first, from outside Nigeria in the first place, most of them make references to egypt to lebanon to iran to iraq and whereas in all those places the strict enforcement of sharia doesn't apply the way they do it primitively and crudely in the north it was the idea that sharia sharia law should be imposed on people in sudan that is why you have southern sudan today so what they're doing to us is not new and if you go to Sudan now, they're flooding in. That is their launch pad. That is from where they are making life miserable for a lot of people. But let me also make this very clear. The spread of Islam in Nigeria dates back to the 11th century. In Bruno, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is why they're fighting very hard to take Bruno from the Kranim people, or from the Kanuris in the northeast of the place they call Nigeria. Later, Islam first was in Bruno before going to the Hausa land. Hausa. Some of you are keep saying this all the time. Kanu and Katsina belong to the Hausa. Gobe, which is Sokoto, belongs to the Hausa. In Nigeria, I wouldn't say Nigeria. In then north, in what you today call Nigeria. Hausas were in the northwest. The Kanu is in the northeast. Until the Fulanis came. And everything else changed. Everything changed. Very sad indeed. I weep. I weep for the people. Islam was quiet for some time, the religion of the court and commerce, and was spread peacefully by Muslim clerics and traders. Increasingly, trans Saharan trade came to be conducted by Muslims. In the second half of the 18th century, a Muslim revival took place in Western Africa. The same thing they're doing today. You know, history has a very funny way of repeating itself. Some of you don't know that history repeats itself, but it does. It does. There was a religious revolution. It had a political element concerning state formation and state conflict. It united the Hausa states under Sharia law. 
1812, the Hausa dynasties became part of the Islamic State or Caliphate of Sokoto. The same thing that is happening today. They first come with Sharia law. The Hausa states that they were in 1812, the Hausa dynasties, the Habe monarchies of the north, the Hausas, became part of the Islamic State. The same thing they are fighting for today. The same caliphate you have today. It happened in 1812. The same thing that happened in 1812, they want to do now. They are doing it today. The same thing. The Sokoto Caliphate ended with partition in 1903 when the British incorporated it into the colony of Nigeria. The British now gave it the stamp of approval and including their Islamic legal system, they were retained and brought into the colonial period, but they came into our land in Biafra and they destroyed everything. They brought Kotoma. Our way, our trial by jury system, which incidentally is what they also have. Also in the USA, Britain destroyed everything. Gave us uh, Kotoma. But in the north, they allowed their Lemajiris to keep their caliphate system. That is what you're suffering till this very day. And we want the whole world to understand it. We want the whole world to understand it. And what is happening today? Some of you may not know, but we are telling you precisely what is happening in the zoo. And I want to tell you that the work IPOB is doing is hitting home. It is striking the enemy where it hurts. It's striking them where it hurts. And some of you must now begin to acknowledge this. Do you know that I said this the other time when the US ambassador, Miss Mary Beth Leonard, visited Jubril in Asarok, claiming to be Buhari after the makeup. Look at his face and look at his hand. You know, they're not the same thing. Wrinkles on the face, the hands are so smooth. But it does the debate for another day. Do you know what Jubril said to the US ambassador? Jubril said, this is what Jubril said. Concerning the human rights issues that is bedeviling Nigeria. This is what Jubril said to the American ambassador. I know that those with access have created an impression of being marginalized. Listen to the grammar. Those with access have created an impression of being marginalized. Who are those with access? Is IPAB because we are able to go to Washington? And who are those being complaining of being marginalized? The same Biafran people. So we are hitting them very hard. Very, very hard, and they know it. We are hitting them hard, and they understand it. They appreciate it, and they know it. These are things that you need to know. So even Jubril himself, they understand it. They know because somebody said that Nigeria is on the brink, that Nigeria is on the brink. They wrote it that this is an opinion and analysis by Western foreign policy observers preoccupied with the rise of ISIS then in the Middle East. They are asking them to wake up to the reality unfolding in Nigeria. They made it very clear that Buhari wants Sharia in Nigeria. I will continue to show open and inside media my total commitment to Sharia movement that is sweeping all over Nigeria. God willing, we will not stop the agitation for the total implementation of Sharia in the country. Agitation, the person asked Buhari, agitation, is this an indication that Mr. Buhari supports violence? These are Western foreign analysts telling the whole world that this man is a violent criminal. That some of you would not listen, you will not have it against this background. We have the likes of um, uh, Miyeti today, Miyeti Allah, that raped and killed our mothers, that raped a woman to death. Miyeti Allah raped a woman to death in a boom. You know what they said? Southeast governors committed to Nigeria's unity. Now you know where your problems lie these are the issues bedeviling us and these are the things that we are working to make our people working very hard to let their friends understand that these people you call your governors that they are there to destroy us as a people they won't understand it it is now happening it is now happening the time now is approximately 9 p.m in Biaf three minutes past nine in the evening and we are proceeding with it we are continuing with this very broadcast because we are heading somewhere. We want to build 
should I say, the context, and then we land. You now know that IPOB is fighting very hard for you. Even Jubril opened his mouth to acknowledge it. You now also know that Buhari, before he died and Jubril took over, they were working for what is happening today. That was why they appointed Tanko Muhammad to be doing what he's doing today, conversing for Sharia. The same thing they did in 1812, in 1802, 1812 to the Hausa people is what they're doing to everybody now, as I warned you. That time they were fighting for corruption and the internment of Sharia, the same thing they're doing today. But some of you are too blind, you cannot see. But thankfully, you have IPOB, alerting you to the dangers that you face every day that you wake up in the zoo. Do you know that when Buhari was alive, he never even acknowledged the existence of ISIS? This government have done a very good job protecting. I want to prove that Buhari is part and parcel of ISIS, Boko Haram, and the rest of them. They have done a very good job, and some of you are very blind; they cannot see. Uh, only a few days ago, what did they say that um, uh, Boko Haram is no longer operating? Isn't that what they said? That Boko Haram no longer operates in the zoo. <laughs> mm. We know about uh, people who have been beheaded, killed every blessed day. We hear about something happening in the zoo. It's no longer news. But I also want to tell you that this is news, in case you have forgotten. I want you to go back to your system and please Google Boko Haram names Buhari, five others as mediators. Now, if you don't know somebody, can you name the person as a mediator? The world is blind. They try to remove this news many times. But we saved it because we know a day like this will come when the world will be trying to excuse evil, when Britain will be trying to cover up evil and what Satan is doing in the zoo. It is here. Listen carefully to this very news, please. Go and Google it. How can Boko Haram name Buhari as a chief negotiator if they don't know who he is? The man who campaigned for Sharia law to be imposed. A man who said they are in agitation. A man that made Western media to question the sanity of Nigerians. Saying to them, how can you even allow this man to be on ballot paper? That said he's agitating for Sharia. He's committed to Sharia. They'll do everything to bring in Sharia. I read on Vanguard newspaper. And they did very well. The leadership of Jama Atu Ali Suna Lida Awati Wal Jihad, that's their name, they are known as Boko Haram, has named the former head of state and presidential candidate of CPC, then, that was the party from General Muhammad Buhari, among six prominent northerners, always northerners, always Fulani, to mediate the group and the federal government. Are you listening? Some of you, are you listening? This is the man that is the granddaddy of terrorists. That was why they named him. That was why they named him as their chief negotiator. It's there for the whole world to see. And I'm sure tomorrow people will come to argue very blindly. Even, I know that even Facebook is helping them, but they will never succeed. You know they will never, ever, ever succeed. Never. We are telling our people about these dangers before it confronts them. Buhari was invited, but not invited, discussed with Boko Haram. They named him and they gave Jonathan conditions, which I'm sure some of you well know. And Jonathan said, no, he wasn't going to accept it. And have you also forgotten? Listen very carefully. You know the damage that Boko Haram have caused and all the terrorists from Fulani North. You know what they have done, don't you? I also want you to Google this. Very, very important. Buhari calls terrorists misguided brothers. They are his brothers. Urges them to embrace peace. They are his brothers. Terrorists are his brothers. It is here. Go and Google it. Buhari calls terrorists misguided brothers. And people are still questioning why Boko Haram is still there, why you have ISIS, why you have um, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda in West Africa, in the Maghreb, why you have Fulani headsmen, 
when the chief terrorist is the one who is in power they are his brothers he opened his mouth and said they are his misguided brothers and why are they misguided i'm going to prove it to you tonight you know why they're misguided Boko Haram? because buhari told Boko Haram when he was alive to attack military and christians and Shekau said no he went and formed another group i told you they formed another group before in my broadcast i said they formed another group some of you were not listening i want to prove tonight that they formed this buhari formed another group of terrorists i want to prove it to you so i'm i'm i'm, I'm you, you 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 have you can see how they started with their sharia how sharia was supreme how they did election used violence decimated and cowed the christian populations of the middle belt the same thing they're doing to us today destroy bringing army oppression pattern dance one pattern dance two pattern dance three pattern dance four they will keep doing it to intimidate you to have fear in you so once they say we are building a mosque you say oh please go ahead and build but don't kill me he called can you think of somebody calling a terrorist group my misguided brothers can you imagine that that's what he called them they are his misguided brothers and some of you are still embracing the zoo called nigeria some of you think that the zoo will somehow make your life better very very sad indeed very very sad indeed the things that you need to know what, what am i going to tell you let me tell you also that they are all in it together. Buhari, Abak Yari, El Rufai, Sultan of Sokoto, all these people are in this killing game together. All of them, they are in it together. Some of you have forgotten, haven't you? Because you have a very shallow memory. You are Nigerians, you don't reason very well. Very shallow memory some of you have. I want to tell you about a man called El Rufai and the Kaduna killings. Have you forgotten? Go and Google it. He's from Punch Newspaper. El Rufai and Kaduna killings. These are the people you call politicians, uh, our leaders. They are the terrorists in office. These are pure terrorists in office. But you don't know, do you? And we are here to tell you. Boko Haram are your brothers. They are your brothers. Boko Haram, they named you as the chief negotiator. You know nothing about them unbelievable unbelievable Kaduna state governor nasa el rufai made a startling revelation last week not this i'm, I'm telling when was this story published it was on december the 9th of 2016 three years ago that diminutive uh, short devil called um pinchami called uh, is like a a pygmy el rufai he made a startling revelation last week. He's the, he publicly admitted that he sent, listen carefully to this, so-called Nigerians, listen very well. Some of you are daft, daft beyond repair, daft beyond recognition. This OG daft. This is a man that paid terrorists. El Fai, from his own mouth, he said he sent emissaries to give money from Nigeria, from Central Bank of Nigeria to Fulani terrorists who had been killing people mass killing mostly christians in southern kaduna in retaliation for alleged deaths of their members and cows you remember when this man also tweeted that uh, every fulani killed is a debt or is a debt owed that they will all be paid back they went to central bank of nigeria brought out millions of dollars and gave to fulani headsmen who are killing people in one nigeria and you're telling me you love Nigeria. You're telling me Nigeria is your country. Unbelievable. 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 Now listen to what the governor said. El Rufai, a governor, he is vying to be president. And I'm sure there are some people from Biafra and the Igbos especially who out of hunger, you know, go, go out of hunger, out of hunger and no shame will take money from this diminutive devil to go and campaign for him. I know some of them will. They are evil. That way, no shame, no class, no honor, and no dignity. Do you know what he said? I, I said, go and Google it. I don't know why I'm reading this thing. So go and Google it yourself. El Rufai and Kaduna killings. 
These are those you vote for to be in power or those that rig themselves into power. This is how sad your lives are. As Nigerians, this is how hopeless and useless some of you are. I thank you, Kukikana, I'm, I'm a Biafran. I'm telling you, I thank God in heaven and created a Biafran and that I'm raising the way that I do. Unbelievable. The same thing they are trying to do to us, they are doing it was what they did to Yoruba in, in, in Fara State in Elorin. They subdued the Yoruba, they subdued them, put them under the, under the rug, put them under the rug, and said they are nothing. You rule when we say you rule. That's why it's only been Obasanjo, nobody else. When Abiola came, they said, no, you're a Muslim, but no, you're, you're a blah, 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 whatever they call them. You're under, you're under litos, you cannot do anything. And Obasanjo agreed to give them Sharia outside the constitution and they made him the president. Now you understand it. Now you know why they hate IPOB. Now you understand why they think they can shut us down, but they cannot. It is impo impossible. They know they are fighting a losing battle. They know they can never defeat IPOB. It is impossible because we keep exposing them. The whole world will hear about The whole world will know what Erufai has done. They cannot cover it with bribery. It's not possible. It's there in black and white. Listen to what El Rufai said. You know, Nigerians, I don't, I don't know what is wrong with them. I, I can't understand those people, honestly. He said, so many of these people were killed, cattle lost, and they organized themselves and came back to revenge. Ah, Fulani came back to revenge. There are one or two that ask for monetary compensation as they're killing people that say to the government, if you don't give me money, money, I won't stop. I'll keep killing. The government then ran to the bank and brought money from the national coffers. The same oil money. That's some idiots that claim they're from Nigeria that will say is our money. They're using it to pay for any terrorists to buy more weapons and then come to buy us a state and wreak havoc. You see the way it works? Only Biafra can save you. Only it doesn't matter what you do. You can dance from here to heaven and back. Only Biafra can save. Only Biafra can save the Christians in the Middle Belt. Only Biafrans can save everybody everywhere in the zoo. If you don't want this jihad to swallow you, if Jonathan doesn't want this jihad to swallow him, he needs to support Biafra. If you don't want to be consumed in this rage of the Fulani, marked in islamic extremism then you must join ipob you must join biafra or else you're finished remember i told you they will use it they will dump you i told the shomole they will use it they will dump you the same thing will happen to tinubu they will use it they will dump you and your eyes will then open you will know how foolish you have been you are killing people and as the Fulanis are slaughtering christians in southern kaduna bbc did not write about it no comment, no, no send their crews there. No, no CNN, no ABC, no CNBC, nothing. They kept slaughtering. And as they are slaughtering innocent people, they said to Kaduna State Governor, give us money. If you don't give us money, we'll stop. And the idiot is proudly saying, as they were asking for money, I gave them money. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Do you know that El Rufai admitted to knowing terrorists full and headsmen that are killing people? The fourth most deadly terror group in the world. A governor that is aspiring to be president, a Sharia advocate, an Islamist said, I know them. That nobody is bothered, no persecution, no nothing. Just like that, because you're in Nigeria and they're the ones ruling. And you call yourself a proud Nigerian. And I say, shame unto you. Nigeria, they have an anti-terror law in Nigeria that says that aiding and abetting terrorism is a crime. It's in their constitution. But because it is a El Rufai, nobody will, will go and arrest him. Nobody will do anything. All they do is to beg for unity. Let us be one. Instead of Europe to rise up and stand on their two feet as a great nation that they were in the past and say enough is enough, enough is forget this oil, forget this fear of oil and gas from the east. We will give it to you for free. Stand up as men that are begging for unity. Let's unite. We are telling you that the man in charge in whose name the zoo is being wrong is a terrorist. 
Buhari is a terrorist. El Rufai is a terrorist. It's very clear. The laws of Nigeria says that aiding and abetting and concealing terror and terrorists is an arrestable offense. It recommends life imprisonment or death penalty. You see? Oh, dear me. She never came out of my body. Why? These people. I feel sorry for them. It is called the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 and Amendment Bill of 2012 with amendments to Section 17 that states very clearly, any person who does, attempts to, threatens to, promote, assist, or facilitates terrorism in any way or manner, or participates in terrorism financing, commits an offense, and is liable to, on, on conviction to life imprisonment, a fine of not less than 150 million naira, or to both the time, the term of imprisonment and the fine. But the man came out and told all of you as foolish as you are and the yoruba media gladly carried it and no problem yes sir yes your excellency yes oh your excellency you met the terrorists yes i met them okay your excellency oh that's good oh how much did i want i i i gave them 200 million dollars from central bank oh your excellency that's good uh, 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 god bless nigeria and you're a journalist unbelievable unbelievable the law is there. What El Rufai did is a prosecutable offense. He should be in prison or dead by now. He went to Central Bank of Nigeria. Who gave him the authority to go there? I have no idea. He went and took money. He's a full and oligarch. He's a full and warlord. He went to, to, to Central Bank, took money and gave to terrorists. They went and bought more weapons and came down to the one and killed people. The same Fulani, Emiyeti Allah, that your, your, your Igbo governors are working with, that they are working together. And I'm asking all these foolish Igbo governors, what is it you're doing now that Azikiwe didn't try to do to, to civilize people who are uncivilizable? To try to make them see light when they prefer to dwell in darkness. What is it that you're going to do now? What manner of appeasement didn't Afonja do in, in a lawyer before losing a lawyer to them? Why can't people go back to history and understand that those that ignore history run the risk of repeating it all the time? The same thing that happened in the past will happen again. It will happen again. They are working with them. Now tell me if these are not terrorists. These are the people that you call your leaders. They are the ones financing terrorism. They are the ones financing it. Full of the regime of Abakiyadi should start fighting terrorism from within. In Asorok, they are all terrorists. I think that Trump should come and arrest all of them in Asorok. They are all terrorists, all of them, including El Rufa, including Sultan of Sokoto. These are the arch terrorists you have in Nigeria. The arch, the sponsors of terrorism. These are the people. They are fighting to impose Sharia by force. The same thing they did. Now, I was saying to all of you before, but you wouldn't understand, do you? And uh, this evening we go. I want to bring the program to an end. But before I bring it to an end, now let me just tell you exactly where we are. Remember, <laughs> oh my goodness me. Uh, oh dear, oh dear me, oh dear me. This man called Abu Musab Habib bin Muhammad bin Yusuf al Banawi is the son of Muhammad Yusuf of Boko Haram. But I give it to Boko Haram that they only became militant when Muhammad Yusuf was killed. I understand that. And I give them that. And I also said to some of you before, but you were not paying attention. I said that when Buhari said that Boko Haram was misguided, it was because of the way that Boko Haram were bombing mosques also in Medugri, in Bronze State, trying to forcibly convert the Kanuri people to their brand of Salafist Islam. I don't know if you're paying attention or not. I don't know if our people we are listening or not, or maybe the subject is too complicated for the average black African mind to comprehend. Is, is what I'm saying too complex? I don't understand it. What, I, what I'm saying is that too difficult for any discerning mind to digest? Bugari called Boko Haram his brothers and said they are misguided. The reason why I said that is because they are not doing what they agreed they should be doing. Attack Christians, burn churches, fight the military, instill fear and terror into the people so we can spread Islam. That's their game plan. Boko Haram said no. And what did Buhari do? Buhari, the dead one with Habak Yari, Sultan of Sokoto, El Rufai, all this cabal, what did they do? <laughs> 
Oh dear. What they did is that um, in 2015, Iswa was born. Now listen very, very carefully, please. I repeat, in 2015, Shekau pledged allegiance. You can go Google this. Shekau pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's Islamic State. This is a supposed Nigerian pledging allegiance to the most deadly terror group in the world. And how are they known? They behead Christians. Follow this very carefully, please, this night. However, Islamic State withdrew its recognition of Shekau in 2016 and instead transferred it to al Banawi's faction, referred to as the Islamic State of West Africa. This is what I was telling them in Washington, D.C. There is Iswa, Islamic State of West Africa. Do you know who was financing Iswa? Muhammad Buhari. And I'm, uh, I will prove it to you tonight. Oh, Shekau's faction did not disappear, but continued the operations. The primary difference between the two appears to be that Shekau's faction takes a harder line on who is an apostate Muslim and therefore deserving death. Understand this. Why Shekau bomb Moss in Bron is because they are apostate Muslim. They are not the true believers of Prophet Muhammad's teaching. That was why he was bombing them. But Buhari kept calling him my brothers. Please do not bomb people do not bomb your fellow Muslims. Focus your attention on Christians, churches, and, and non converts That was their point of departure. Shekau said no. Buhari used his influence to put all the weight behind al Banawi. And who is al Banawi? The son of Muhammad Yusuf. Now, how do we know that Buhari was involved? How do we know? How do we know? How do we know? Because some people do not follow history very well. They killed 15 aid workers in the north, Islamic State in West Africa, and Al Banawi was a wanted man. Wanted man, hunted by the army. The USA came in looking for him. The USA came in looking for him. His name and Google Khalid Al Banawi, Nigeria's Islamist group head, arrested. He was arrested. They were looking for him. The US were looking for him. They killed 15 aid workers. They were looking for him. The United States of America placed a bounty of three points. Let me also tell Abakiari tonight. I want to let Abakiari understand something tonight. I want to let the Asura Kabal understand something tonight. I've not given these facts to US lawmakers yet. I'm going to give it to them. I, I was struggling to prove this link, to give them physical evidence. This is from the BBC. Your friend, the BBC, they published it. Listen carefully. Al Khalid Al Banawi was captured in Lokoja, in Kogi State. The United States government placed a bounty of $5 million on his head after branding him one of the three Nigeria's specially designated global terrorists in 2015. It's not in 2012. Understand this. Because they broke away from Boko Haram. It is here. And Saru is a splinter group of Nigeria's largest jihadist group. Not a terrorist, a jihadist group. Boko Haram, known for kidnapping foreigners. Security agents, listen very carefully ideologically aligned everything i tell you is correct ideologically aligned to al-qaeda in the islamic maghreb buhari took them out of al-qaeda and placed them in the more deadly isis that believes in killing only christians i'm giving you facts and figures al, al banawi when he came out he was with al-qaeda in the maghreb buhari brought him out of al-qaeda in the maghreb and used him to try to split boko haram into two so that Muslims will stop being the focus of the attack, they should focus on Christians. Fact and figures here being confirmed by BBC of all people. 
they carried out an attack in 2012 in Abuja and freed dozens of their inmates. They made a breakthrough on a particular Friday when Al Banawi was arrested in Lokoja. He is among the top terrorists. He is among the top terrorists wanted all over the world. A top terrorist wanted all over the world. Now you're going to be shocked as to what happened next. Because I warned US lawmakers that we Biafrans, Judeo Christians, especially at large, are always at the receiving end of any Islamic backlash whenever the US government attacks any high profile targets, be it in the Middle East or anywhere around the world. And they killed 11, beheaded 11 Christians because our Baghdadi was killed. Al Baghdadi is not a Nigerian. It happened in faraway Iraq. But to tell you the level of Islamic jihadism in Nigeria, there was where they killed 11 Christians. Not in Egypt, not in Sudan, not in Yemen, not in Saudi Arabia, but in Nigeria. To underline the fact that Nigeria or to give the impression to the world that Nigeria is an Islamic state. The lobbying firm for Nigeria in the zoo, they are called Bernard. They were briefing against us, saying that everything we are saying is a lie. But this is from BBC. Confirmation that there was a time that, um, uh, oh dear me, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Buhari is the chief sponsor of terrorism. And in Abuja, they started the trial. Nigeria will begin trying Boko Haram suspect detained in military camps for months. Cases will be handled by the Justice Minister, not DSS. Now, do you understand? Cases of IPOB on the case of um, uh, El Zagzaki or Sambo Dasuki or Shore, we are handled by DSS. But when it comes to Islamic jihadists and killers and terrorists, they now transfer the file to Ministry of Justice. Why have you there been a delay in prosecuting them? They said because there's been uh, issues with uh, facilitating their arraignment. They said all is now set for them to appear before justice. Um, who was the justice actually trying them? I think it's not been Tanya. Is it Bintanya that tried them? No, it's not been Tanya. I'll get the name of the judge in a minute. They said there are 1,600 detainees that will be tried. Despite claims that Nigerian forces that Boko Haram were arrested and were in custody, nothing happened. They released them and they joined, some of them joined the Nigerian army. Boko Haram continued their attacks. They continued their attacks. This was a people. America placed five million dollars on the head, on the head of these very people, of the especially Al Banawi. They placed six million sorry five million dollars bounty on his head do you know what happened al banawi was in court ask them today where is al banawi he was released from court in nigeria despite the fact that america placed five million dollars on his head as i want everybody to ask malami go and ask the dss director ask abak yari it has a rock this is what I'm going to ask American lawmakers to ask Nigeria. If you claim you are not aiding and abating terrorists, how come you are arrested? The, one of the most wanted terrorists in the world, Khalid al -Banawi, the son of Yusuf Muhammad, the founder of Boko Haram, and you list him from custody. Go and do your research. That is conclusive proof that the, this Asorok you see today, Sultan of Sokoto, El Rufa, they are all in this Islamization agenda together and they are using their terrorist groups to prosecute this very war. But some of you are too blind, you cannot see. But thankfully, you have IPOB. I rest my case. Where is, where is Al Banawi today? He was wanted. BBC said you arrested him in local jam. He was all over the world. You arrested him. Where is he today? He was released from Abuja High Court on the orders of the presidency. On the Trump administration, we'll hear this, of course, in the next few weeks with all the facts and figures. And at least the American lawmakers, they have conscience. They will rise up and they will speak against evil. 
now the world you understand it now you see the reason why facebook is hacking not hacking but basically frustrating my account you can see the reason why they keep paying and they keep paying they keep shelling out money to stop this very marvelous work that god is using ipob to do now you understand it don't you all of you now understand it. Where is Al Banawi? I want the media to ask Abakiari. Al Banawi was arrested in Nokoja. Where is he? Where is Al Banawi? Where is he today? Where is he? Where is Khalid Al Banawi? Where is he today? Where is he? You have arrested him. Where is he today? They released him. They released him. They released him because that is the way that the zoo flows that is the way that nigeria functions that is why the same person that nigeria released is the one responsible for beheading 11 christian captives in nigeria as retaliation for our baghdad is there now you all understand it don't you you now understand it they were beheaded by isis in west africa led by Khalid al banawi released by Nigeria from detention. Soldiers captured him in Lokoja. They took him to Abuja. Asorok gave the order and he was released to come back and slaughter 11 Christians in Nigeria. Very, very sad indeed. In the north, in the areas that they control. Very, very sad indeed. From independent observers has been proven proven beyond every reasonable doubt every reasonable doubt that buhari that now in fact i have the i have the 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 this day headline it says buhari military offensive against boko haram anti north you have all forgotten that haven't you when hegelika was fighting the matter i was telling jonathan's people hegelika removed hegelika because of what the north said Buhari said, military offensive against Boko Haram, anti-North. You know what they did? They went and removed it from Google. But we still have the picture. If you Google this very headline I've said, go to the images you will see there. Uh, maybe by tomorrow morning they'll remove it. Uh, what other proof do you need that Nigeria is a den of terrorists? From the government to the, to the permanent secretary, everybody in Abuja that is Islamic, that is Fulani, is a terror financier. They are all terrorists. They go to the Central Bank of Nigeria. They bring out money and they give it to terrorists. They arrested one of the top terrorists in the world. Five million dollar bounty on his head. They took him to Abuja. From the law court, he was released in Abuja. And you're telling me that Buhari's regime is not responsible for what is happening. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Everybody's writing it. That they have now regained strength. They have regained strength. Do you know when all this thing started? Some of you do not know, but I will tell you. He started with Maitasine. Do you know him? He wanted to bring jihad. He wanted to bring um, uh, a, a new way of Islam. And do you know the funniest thing? At the height of Maitasine, at the height of Maitasine, Buhari was the chief of army staff. He didn't do anything. The same way now he's deploying troops everywhere, killing innocent people. He never deployed troops against Matasina. Buhari took over power in 1983. Matasina kept killing people till 1985. It was only when Buhari left that the Bangidas regime dealt with Matasina. What was Matasina doing? The same thing. The same thing. Killing of Christians. He killed 4,177 people in Kano. Non-Muslims in Kano. 4,177. Who was the chief of army staff then? Buhari. Buhari took over power in 1983. Buhari, did he stop my No. He never mobilized against them. Because they are doing the work of Islam. The work of, um, of um, Amadou Bello. The work of Ottoman Banfodio. Now, do you see the way they roll in the north? Every decade, every, oh my goodness, every regime, this man is, is always death, killing, death, 
killing, death, killing of people. And some people call him uh, 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 Mr. President in the name of Buhari. Mr. President. We have the facts and the figures. You can't lie. They killed many people. It was untrue. 4,177. That, where did they kill us? They killed them in Kanu. 4,177 dead in Kanu in October of 1982. A new uprising broke out in, in Bulumkutu. Near Medugri, they killed 3,350 people. They also went to a place called Rigasa Village near Kaduna. There, they killed 1,000 people. In April of 1985, there was yet another uprising in Gondembachi State. We are over 100 people we are killed by Maitasine. Maitasine was a set founded by one Muhammad Marwa. You know, Buba Marwa, the former governor of um, Lagos State. You know, I told you that they don't have fathers. They, they say, oh, uh, what, they, what they call us, oh, this is I've forgotten what they call us. Uh, um, baby factory. <laughs> I, I, I love that. In the North, when they give birth to them, they have no father. You know, the Alamaji. Anywhere you're born, you answer the name of that place. If they're born in Sokoto, you answer that in Sokoto. If they're born, you don't have any father, you answer Al-Haji al haji because there is no father. They're born you in Marawa, you answer Marawa. They're born you in Tafawa Balewa. Some of you don't know Tafawa Balewa is a village. They're born you in Tafawa you answer your name is Tafawa Balewa. They're born you in Kassina, no father, you answer Ottoman Kassina. That is how they are in the north. No father. This one is his name is uh, Muhammad uh, Marawa. His nickname was Maitasine. Who did they kill? How many families in Biafra land lost people in the north as a result of this? And who was chief of army staff then as Burata is doing now, flexing his um, tiny wings? It was Buhari. He did nothing. He did not mobilize against them. And um, the, some of the cowards from the west will not learn. Maybe the Yoruba papers, they thought if they protect this man long enough, uh, they will get the benefits of um, governance from them. But everybody's being swallowed up. Everybody. You can see the way they walk. You think you're free? <laughs> you're deluded. This was how it started. So the support that Buhari and his people always lent to extremist groups did not start today. That was why they released Al Banawi from detention after being placed on the most wanted list in America as a terrorist for killing 15 aid workers. That person that Buhari's regime, Abba Kiyari, released from detention Christmas Eve, they beheaded 11 Christians. I have my facts and my figures to establish a collusion between Asorok and all the terror groups in Nigeria. Facts which they themselves can never, ever, ever deny. The question that I want the new U.S. ambassador to ask the cabal in Asura Kabakiyari, Jubril al Sudani, representing Buhari, who is now dead, is how intercepting bags of rice in a Boeing state is the effective use of the millions of U.S. military aid when Fulani terrorists are wreaking havoc in the north. They are seizing bags of rice in a Boeing. Fulani terrorists are in a Boeing state killing, raping, and killing people. They say it's an operation to check IPOB. And for once, as I said before, a Khan is now beginning to say something. They said to the Sultan, speak up against persecution of Christians or you shut up. That's how they should be talking. Not any time the Sultan speaks, they fall over themselves like a bunch of idiots. And why is it that the zoo is struggling to defeat Boko Haram? Analysis by the Financial Times, they are struggling because the government of Nigeria is Boko Haram. The government of Nigeria is ISIS in West Africa. They are terrorists who are in power. They are jihadists. They have come to spread Islam. They can do about that. That is a fact of life. That is a fact of life. That was why they released Khalid al banawi from detention. That is also a known fact, which they themselves can never, ever deny. How can they defeat Boko Haram 
or the menace of terrorism when most of their personnel and equipment are in peaceful Biafra land. Roadblocks everywhere. I was told that Calabar today, there is no everywhere in Calabar, there is roadblock. Everywhere in Calabar today, there is roadblock. What they are doing, nobody knows. That is the way they are. That is the way they function. That is the way these people are. Fulani headsman who raped a boy woman to death. Google it if you want. Fulani headsman who raped a boy woman to death says, I only did one round in a boy state. Do you think a Biafran can go to Katsina and rape a Fulani woman to death? What will happen? They will kill everybody in the North. But this is what Dave Omahi brought to you people. As I warned you that those your governors, <laughs> they will destroy all of you. You didn't listen. Is it not happening now? Is it not happening now? How can they defeat terrorism when all the military checkpoints in Biafra land is manned by the army from the north? How can they defeat terrorism? Everywhere. From Oroko Rock Junction to Atimbo by Edim bus stop. Everywhere across Calabar. But the Frani will say to them, oh, we are one Nigerians, don't let the Igbos dominate you. They will come to dominate you. Then you are there, paving the way for Fulani terror, for wave after wave of Fulani terrorism to come in and destroy and decimate the people. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But we must speak the truth. Because things are happening that people never ever before believed will happen. Because those who are in power in Nigeria are the ones who are sponsoring the terrorists. They are the ones who are making sure that the zoo falls under the relentless onslaught of jihadists from across the whole of West Africa. From across the whole of West Africa. They chased Jonathan away from office and very cowardly he surrendered without a fight. Now look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. Even Financial Times acknowledged that ISWAP, which is Islamic State in West Africa province, is led by Al Banawi. He is backed by ISIS and has focused on winning over Muslim civilians while targeting the military. Exactly what I told you many, many months ago. Exactly what I told you. That was what they did. Buhari said to, to Shekau, stop attacking mosques. Shekau said no. He was attacking apostates. That's non-true believers of Islam. That although they are Muslims, they are not true believers. Banawi said no. Asorok, you say today, you call it the seat of power, your seat of presidency. They decided to fund Banawi to start killing Christians and fighting soldiers. And it is here, the National Times of London. What thing I tell you is the truth? Everything I tell you is the truth. They said they have vast ungoverned spaces in the north of Nigeria. But they are in Biafra land, mounting roadblocks. Mounting road on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And that is why they steal. They said their minister of uh, defense have stolen money. Let's <laughs> go full on <laughs> Thieves they are. They are divorced to tell you, oh, we are fighting corruption. We are fighting corruption. They have stolen money. They have stolen money. And you will not hear them complain. You will not hear them say anyone will go to jail. No, it's all just Okara that they know because I want all just Okara and he wouldn't listen. The same way that I'm warning them. Look at Oshomole today. They've kicked him to the, to the curb. They say Buhari has come under, of course, uh, Jubril has come under heavy criticism for failure to act in their alleged indictment of the Minister of Defense. Bashir Magashi. For learning criminals, they are no matter Diko thieves, Ibrahim Taher of Nighten in those days, of communication. Have they forgotten? These are arch criminals, looters, grade one looters. Never they can never go to jail. They are for learning. When I go outside and they say, Oh, it's war against terrorism, war against terrorism. Unbelievable. Um, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this is what Facebook is covering. That is why they are fighting me 
that is why they give uh they go and help the zoo set up fake accounts to come and be attacking me and i love it i know it makes us a lot more stronger a lot more stronger magashi is a rogue he's fulani and he's a thief and he's in the government of terrorists for terrorists and by terrorists uh, um that, that that is the way that is the way they are that is the way they deceive some of you but fortunately they can never ever deceive us not now not tomorrow not ever they can deceive you if you like they go and they reject christians in the north it is very clear for all to see it is very clear for all to see the cjn and uh, gunmen attack jonathan's residence while the person that claim it is his jonathan's cousin a uh, 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 blast can <laughs> over <laughs> Oh, dear me. He called me a liar. Said, you're a liar. <laughs> and they went to go and kill Jonathan. And he shut up. Natural born, wretched cowards. People who are slaves and will be remain slaves forever. What happened to Adaka Boro and Kensero? I never taught them any lesson. They don't believe in reading history and learning from it. They will always serve the master. Jonathan was playing the good boy, the good president. Look at him today. Did this stop them from coming to look for him to kill him? Jonathan fought for an APC candidate in Bielsa. APC candidate in Bielsa. He was the PDP president. He fought for APC candidate. Did that stop them from coming to look for him to kill him? And you're talking, I don't know the... The name didn't even sound Biafran, so I didn't even want to respond. He had the fool who had a slave name that I cannot dignify with a response. They came to Jonathan's house and he's asking them to investigate. <laughs> he's asking Alamajri to investigate themselves. <laughs> Unbelievable. They are the ones now telling us that Boko Haram will use chemical weapons because they know what they're doing. They are the ones funding the manufacture of the chemical weapons. The same people you have in Asaro that they want to. So obviously advising them on what to do when you see the nigerian government you see the face of jubril heavily made up of course look at his hands now maybe the, tomorrow they go and put letters on his hands to give him some wrinkles look at his hands and look at his face they're not the same the people or the same person so to speak go and look at it now there's all oh, the nigerian government the cabal they came out when i was telling you about the cabal did you believe me they came out and said oh the cabal exists they're also human beings so those that claim that Buhari is a nonsense general, if Buhari were to be alive, do you think he would already people talking talk about his government in those times? There's a cabal running the government. Asha will come, they'll lock her out. And she'll be lamenting on a widely secreted video. And you say Buhari is alive? Hey. This UG, black, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Compare the crimes of Boko Haram, of ISIS in West Africa, of Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, and the Fulani headsman Miyeti Yala. Has IPOB done anything wrong compared to these people? <laughs> but they are the ones in the army. They kill you, they recruit them, they put them in the army. They kill you. Hero Fire will go to the central bank and give them money. They kill you, they protect them. And you're still shouting one Nigeria. You're still shouting one Nigeria. And you're telling me that somehow you are normal. You're telling me that somehow all is well with your brain. I doubt that very much. I doubt that very much. When Buhari was alive and calling for full share implementation, why won't the CJN be emboldened? Buhari, I declare, is the modern father of terrorism in Nigeria. Buhari is the chief terrorist, and that is going to be our campaign to the whole world. Facts and figures to substantiate and back up everything we are saying. Insurgency and Buhari's call for full Sharia. Also, the, the, the news is everywhere. Everywhere. Unbelievable. Buhari was given an opportunity in 2001 
to choose between Nigeria, a secular Nigeria, and fundamentalist Islam. And he said, I choose Islam. It's in Vanguard newspaper of 24th of December 2014. Go and Google it. Insurgency and Buhari's call for full Sharia. Insurgency, which is Boko terrorism, and Buhari's call for full Sharia, they are one and the same. Is carried by Vanguard newspaper. Insurgency and Buhari score for Fusharia. Some of it. Why? My, I, don't, I don't want to speak against what you Kabiama has created, honestly speaking. Some of you, you make me want to speak against what God has made, and I can't. I can't. I can't. It's there for all to see. But you don't read. You, you read only this person said this about that person, that person said this about that person, all rubbish, total tattoo and gossip. That is the news. Insurgency and Buhari's call for full Sharia. The two are the same. Vanguard newspaper is there. Go and Google it. You will see it. Very, very shameful. Very, very shameful indeed. They went on to claim that they released Shore and Dasuki on compassionate grounds. No longer <laughs> by the rule of law or what the court said. That tells you all you need to know about the damnable zoological republic. That tells you all you need to know about those people who are there. Everything I've told you has come to pass. I think somebody actually did me, you know, wouldn't say did me a favor. I think it's all Luciani in there of um, TB, TBRV. Did me a very big favor by compiling some of my quotes. This one was on the 6th of February, 2014. As I told you, as their campaigning for elections, it's all there. I think it was like, uh, on the 12th of October, 2014. 6th of November 2014, December the 2nd, 2014, 16th of January 2015, 15th January again, 2015. These are the quotes that I made about what is going to happen to the zoo. Everything has come to pass. Everything has come to pass. And um, this is, as I said, this newfound courage by Christian Association of the Zoo. I welcome it. No, it's called the National Christian Elders Forum. Killing of 11 Christians. Hey, I love this. At last, people who agree with me. Killing of 11, this is by Vanguard. Please go and Google it. Killing of 11 Christians. Blame Buhari, Sultan, for Islamic state in West Africa. Boko Haram's audacity. I, I end my, my case here. So people can now see. Hey, the Lent Book Christian elders, they can now hear, well, they can now see what we have seen long time ago. This was the December the 30th, 2019. This summarizes everything. Killing of 11 Christians by the National Christian Elders Forum. They're saying the killing of 11 Christians. Blame it on Buhari, Sultan of Sokoto, for the audacity of the terrorists. Exactly what I've been telling you from time. It should be segregated everywhere, as a matter of fact. Everywhere. Blame them for it. Blame them for it. He said that the Muhammad Buhari, Sultan of Sokoto Saad Abu Bakr, should be held responsible for the audacity, expansion, and unbridled atrocities of Islamic State of West Africa province, Iswap, Boko Haram, and headsmen in the country. What else do you want me to say? What else do you want me to say? Amaka, make sure this is secreted everywhere. Raw so the world can read it. That humanity may read it. Christian, they are now speaking. They are now waking up. And what the solution is not restructuring. The solution is not one Nigeria because they have this jihad. They, since 1804, 1804, they have been planning this jihad since 1804. And they will never rest until they accomplish it. Never, ever rest. Never. They can never rest. Until it's accomplished. It's accomplished. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everything I've been saying, they have now confirmed it. To show you that what Radio Biafra is doing is immense. Immense work. Uh, when I say to blame those people, they don't understand. They're the ones that get them impetus. When El Rufai will go to the CBA, Central Bank of Nigeria, collect for a hard currency and give to terrorists, what do you expect those terrorists to do? To down their tools? Of course not. They'll continue killing. They'll continue killing. When we warn the whole world that the Asoro Cabal is all over the place, that there was person terrorism, some of you did not believe us. 
prescribed by the Sun newspaper. That was a long time ago, almost eight, eight months ago, when we said that the, we told the world that the judiciary does as a rock cabal's bidding against the common man. They didn't believe us until they held show And then the whole world discovered that what Abiyab is saying is not propaganda after all, it is the truth. We told, we didn't allege, we told them the judiciary does what cabal says. That is why Bintanya could have now released the husband and the son because uh, she did for them what they had hoped for. And that's where we are. And that is the zoo for you. That's the zoo for you. <laughs> uh, we must continue. The time now is a minute. It's a minute to ten, isn't it? In Jeffrey, that means we've been on air now for nearly four hours, if I'm not mistaken. For nearly four hours, if I am not mistaken. This is a live presentation from Radio Biafra this evening. is a live address on the eve of New Year to the whole world. We are preaching the truth, the link between those who are ruling Nigeria and terrorists. The Fulani rulers of Nigeria are all terrorists. Just don't take it from me. Even the Christian Elders Forum in Nigeria have now confirmed it. They now agree also they have a cabal who is ruling the zoo, that it is not Buhari who is in charge, but the cabal. Because Garabashi, who came on the Fulani Janjaweed news channel, Channels TV, and said it openly that those people you, who are the cabals that they are respectable Nigerians, respectable jihadists, that's who they are. Very, very sad indeed. That was why, that is why I should say they, they can sack anybody they want at will. They can disgrace Osibajo. They can humiliate him as much as they like. They can also humiliate Aisha and nothing will happen. They control the military, they control the police, they control the Navy and the Air Force, they control civil defense, they control customs, and they control any government parametric organization. Once you carry AK for certain, including uh, Fulani headsmen, you are under the control of the cabal in Asorok. And that is why when they started to kick out um, Oshomole, no one stopped them. Oshomole is now consigned to the history books. It's gone. And some of you must also know that those who claim they're fighting corruption, they padded the budget with 264 billion. They intend to steal. It is there. They see no evil here, no evil generation. Very, very sad indeed. I go back to those who I respect and those who I revere. Pa Aya Debanjo always speaking the truth that are anarchy looms, of course, unless the zoo disintegrates. Uh, talking about restructuring is not going to help matters at this point in time because they, they will never ever agree to it. They will never ever agree to it. They will never ever agree to it. We are fighting to be free, to liberate everybody else in the process. Those who want to work with us can work with us. Even the Sultan is saying, don't provoke us to take up arms. Provoke you, you are the one ruling Nigeria, you are the one killing people, and you're even complaining again that you want to take up arms. That's so no one will call him for questioning. If it's any other person saying this, they will email, they will say DSS is inviting you for questioning to come and clarify what you said, but not the Sultan, because they are all terrorists. And every institution in Nigeria headed by a Fulani person is part of the wider Fulani conspiracy. But they are busy in Biafra land arresting people for selling newspapers. They are busy criminalizing the South. I mean, we arrest 86 people. We are asked. 86 people are arrested in, 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 the, in, in Biafra land, whereas there are terrorists in the North beheading people. The army is busy telling you because we have no guns, so you can arrest us easily. All they did is the point gun at you. If you move, I move you, I will shoot you, and you stand. And they'll bundle you into their vehicle if they don't kill you and harvest your organs and send to India to sell. They will take you to the nearest police station and dump you there. They say they're fighting crime in the south, but in the north, you have terrorists that they themselves are sponsoring beheading people. Jonathan said that those that um, attacked his home must be <laughs> persecuted. I don't know who he's talking to. I don't know the world that he actually inhabits. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And you also know this evening, a country that operates a secular constitution is now saying tonight that men and women can no longer meet at night in Jigawa <laughs> Nigeria is a joke, honestly. 
Go and Google it. It's there. It's today's news from Premium Times. It's a, a Fulani paper anyway. The government bans men, women from meeting at night. It's part of the Sharia in a secular country that says that everybody has the right to freedom of assembly. Now you cannot talk to a woman at night in Jigawa. Look at government. They have banned it. And you're in Nigeria. And you're saying, God bless Nigeria. Those of you going for taking over, uh, whatever you call it. You cannot meet a woman at night in Jigawa. And you're in one Nigeria operating a secular constitution. What an utter laughable contradiction. Very, very sad indeed. That is the type of Nigeria that this Janja will that administration has given to you. And you have no choice but to endure it. Because that's what you want. Very, very sad indeed. I will not dignify uh, this very person with any detailed response. But let me remind those that read uh, what I said about Jonathan Sakin Hedrika and the response from somebody claiming to be the cousin who we do not know. Nobody knows his name or where he comes from because his name is entirely English. No one knows where he comes from. He said he's, um, you know, he doesn't know what led to the removal of um, of Ihejirika by Jonathan. We know that the Northern Cabals forced Jonathan to prematurely remove Ihejirika and Azazi, the former National Security Advisor. That was what prompted, in case this person doesn't know, that was what prompted the assassination of this uh, of the former state governor on 15th of December 2012. Azazi died along with Governor Patrick Yakowa of Kaduna State. He was a Christian governor of Kaduna State. He was assassinated when their naval helicopter crashed in Okoroba village of Bayasa State. Well, on their way back to Iguacha Airport from the funeral of Oronto Douglas's father. He was killed because he was a Christian. This is Patrick Yakowa. People do not know this. And the Muslims wanted to take over power. And they took over power in Kaduna State. That is what they do. He was the first person from Kaduna and the first Christian to become governor in that very state. An innovation to which all Muslims leaders objected to in the north. How can a Christian be the governor of Kaduna State and they killed him mm. in a helicopter crash? That is one Nigeria for you. An evil entity. An evil entity. Very sad indeed. <clears throat> very, very sad indeed. Very sad indeed. Jonathan was living under severe fear when he was the president. Jonathan's downfall and mistake was the removal of Ihejirika and late Azazi. He could have won the 2015 election if the two men were in charge of security and Bokaram and Fanny Hesman could have been defeated by now. That is a fact of life. Jonathan was living in fear. They have now sensed that fear. That's why they came to his house to kill him. That is it. No amount of self-hatred will purge you of that very reality. That is a fact. Why I fired the service chiefs. I want to let that very imbecile understand this. That this is Radio Biafra and I'm the can. Anything I say is gospel, it is the truth. I have no need to lie. I have never lied and I don't intend to. Start now. So, mouthing all that rubbish to please DSS didn't stop them from going to kill Jonathan. You must understand that very clearly. Jonathan sacked in Hejirika. It was contained in Vanguard newspaper. Go and Google it. Why I fired. He didn't say why I uh, why they resigned. Why I fired service chiefs by Jonathan. Jonathan was a coward. He fired the service chiefs at the instigation of the North, the Northern Cabal. They forced him to. War against Boko Haram is war against the North. Buhari said so. Um, Sultan of Sokoto was upset with Hejirika for making huge advances against Boko Haram. So, very cowardly and foolishly, Jonathan removed the chief of defense staff, Olai, Olai Ibrahim, who is not from the north, I think he's a Yoruba man. He removed Lieutenant General Azubiki Hejirika, chief of army staff, and also the chief of army staff, then, uh, and um, chief of naval staff, Dele Ezorba, was removed replaced by northerners simple as that if that is not cowardice i don't know what is it didn't stop obama from from removing him from office did he you don't go pleasing the north and hoping they will love you that means you're a very stupid person very very stupid person indeed 
and we die out today this very evening. There are many of them. Go and read up on them. How Jonathan sacked these people, it is very clear for the whole world to see. This is Radio Biafra. You have joined us this evening and we have brought you this very gospel. And we are wishing you, for those of you who adhere to the Gregorian calendar, I must also tell you that this calendar that you're adhering to sometime, I think it was in 1472, the then Pope, Pope Gregory, removed 12 days from the calendar uh, in order to make sure that Christmas falls every December, every winter. Do you understand that? Now, I don't want to go into that because some of you may be too much for you to absorb. That what you're following is called the Gregorian calendar. It's not the calendar of nature, but all the same, I wish you a very happy new year wherever you are around the world. And especially those who believe in the truth. May the truth and the light that it represents always find you. And from me, from here this very evening, on a day where we have demonstrated our honor, Lord, devotion to the worship of Elohim, to go come from Mihanine, that Biafra, we state, very categorically and unequivocally, is our religion. Here on Radio Biafra is where we worship because to go to Kabiyama.